All right, man. Welcome to the BS sessions where we like to BS about sports, music, and movies. Mainly music. Our top usually our topics are about music because you guys out there seem to like it. We do movie episodes, nobody watches. But we do music episodes, we get downloads. But man, let's throw it to my co-host, the great, the supernator, Jerry Supe. Uh you can that's the last time I want to hear that nickname. <laughs> <laughs> That comes with something a little bit better than that, dude. Come on. What is it? The Soupy Nader. Nah. <laughs> I like to call him Superman. I, I I demand more royalty, okay? Make it royalty. royal sounding. I'm just Soup, super, Your Highness. Soup. Super soup. Superstar. I like nah, that one's stupid. Look at that stupid movie. <laughs> anyway. Jerry Superfly Snooker. <laughs> eh, that's better. I mean, it's better. But anyway, um, yeah, what's up, everybody? It's uh Thursday night, fun night, drinking night for me. It's my only night I can really drink now. So it's not for Sunday. I tend to drink and then hopefully not drinking in my tears on Sunday, but uh, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, let's introduce our guest, man, our usual MVP guest, man. Love this guy, man. He's my co-host on the Three Shots Down podcast. We're doing an interesting topic this week. Um, Andy Rodriguez from the Black Spinner Cycle podcast as well. How you doing, man? Cycle? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank Circle. you so much. For, um, the black um, spinner cycle. That's me. that's that's the hidden cycle on the washing machine. The washer dryer, oh, okay. yeah. Anyway, Andy, sorry. Um, turn the water black. That's a song <laughs> by Frank Zappa. But yeah, I um I'm very excited to be here. I'm always happy to spend the evening with you guys talking music, movies, and sports. So here I am. So excited. And also from the Gray Redbeard videos on YouTube, check it out. And um, he's actually in, in, responsible for our topic tonight, man. Chris Elio, man, how you doing? What's up? I'm a lover, not a fighter. Cool. <laughs> and I know Mark is wearing that shirt just to piss me off because he knows how much I hate that fucking album. We but it will not give uh, in. My favorite band laid the biggest egg on that album, dude. Oh, I fucking opinion. love that record. I oh fucking my love God. it too. No, oh, it's terrible. Oh. So anyway, okay. anyway. Okay, real wait, real quick. Crash of the Crown or Cyclorama? I like both. psychorama has got a song I like. I like that. Yeah. Uh, waiting, waiting for our time to come. That I like that song. Entire album a lot. is one big hour long. Yeah. I the mission, lo- the I mission's love killing the, the thing, mission. killing the yeah, thing the, you the, love the, rules. The mission was a great freaking album. The mission was amazing. Yeah. I'll admit that Crash of the Crown is a step down from the mission, but still, I thought it was solid. It's a solid record. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't want. Yeah. Okay. Um. I. I was very disappointed as being a huge Sticks fan. Um, all right, well, let's get down to the BS, man. Let's get it going. All right, man. So uh, let's start off. Let's start off with uh, our former co-host hated when I did this, but we're a show. We give information. Not all of you guys know this shit. So Toby Keith passed a st- st- stomach cancer, man. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna always start with you, Jerry, and end with Andy. Or I'm going to end with me because it's easier going to circle, but you're going to do the other thing. Uh, so there we go. So what do you think of Toby Keith, man? Uh, well, I'm not a country music fan. I knew who he was. I know some of the songs. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry to his family and fan base. Um, I knew he was suffering from it for a while now. But uh, I mean, that's all I really have to say, man. You know, it's just a shame, dude, that I mean, he was what, 62, I think. Yeah, 62. Yeah, uh, that's too fucking young, man. So uh, I, I mean, I really that's really all I got to say. I'm not really a, you know, uh you know, a fan of his music, so I couldn't tell you much about him. Yeah, Chris. Uh, he got a boot in his ass. That was the cancerous way. <laughs> he he made he made up with you know he made up with the Dixie Chicks, right? You mean you mean the chicks? Listen, uh, I don't wish bad on anybody. So with that little joke aside, it sucks that somebody died at the age of sixty-two. Um. If if stomach cancer was going to take down a god like Ronnie James Dio, Toby Keith had no fucking chance. And that's sad, but it's a fact. And I, I, I my condolences to his family. That, that's about as far as it'll go for me. Uh, you know, I could give two, two left nuts, less. Hey, literally Rock. two, two uh, literally two left nuts. Exactly. Ex- ex- for Toby Keith, other than the fact that he's another human being who suffered from a horrible, horrible, horrible. Disease. Yeah. So I feel bad for his family, and, and and it sucks that he died that way. That that's just that's a shitty way to go. So, yep. you know, that's all Andy. I can say about it. Yeah, I've got several of his cassettes. I'm a fan of his music from the late '90s to the early 2000s. Later on, 
um, at about 2012 until 2018, it got way, way too political for me, where I didn't even enjoy it anymore. But I am from Texas. You know, we we uh, we listen to a lot of country music here. So um, also the great thing about Toby Keith was that he was one of the few that in the world of country was a singer songwriter because he wrote all of the songs. In country music, that's not very yeah. common because they have hired songwriters who write for for everybody so um he did that very well um his storytelling was really good he was um he had fun music he really did until you know he took a turn um to to um down the road that i really didn't want to follow at all and then his um his politics played too much in the and the media for me and i just um it just turned me off after a while and um but you know, I you know when my wife told me he he passed, I felt sadness because he was a big part of my late nineties, early two thousands time. So you know, God bless Toby Keith. Yeah, when I was uh, a, when I was a, when I was a conservative moron uh, in the two thousands, I actually found a, a few of his songs good. But you wrote down you I, you 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 took that road too, Chris. I was on that road too for a while. Oh, I was a conservative for me too yeah. for probably the all of the aughts. It, you know, until... I, I've always voted both ways. I've always done it both. I mean, both I don't, ways. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to drag us down. Yeah, let's not talk about but, politics. But, <laughs> but more or less, I, I was a conservative until I reached a reason, like until I realized I didn't have to be religious person right. to raise my kids right. That was pretty much right. the delinea the line of delineation for me was like, mm. eh, and then I went from there, and that was it. So, all right, well, I'm going to tell you the truth on Toby Keith. I had no who the fuck this guy was until I saw him on Sammy Hagar's road trip on Axis TV. And right. uh, Sammy Hagar put up a good thing on Instagram about his brother, Toby Keith, and them together. Yeah, they were good friends. Same who he met him. But that said, uh, condolences to your family, dude. I have no idea what you sound like. Um, uh, like on, I think I think the day, that, that, that morning that he had passed at work, we played his 32 greatest hits. No, 35 greatest wow. hits CD. He has at, at work, so I was gonna say he had thirty-five. Wow, that's impressive. I find oh, yeah. hard to believe. Yeah. And that was that's just impressive. one. Well, part. country re releases a lot of singles. Yeah. He yeah. really I, did. He really was a big, big star back in the day. That's a, really I think that's was. a self-indulgent thirty-five, though. I don't really think that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah. I don't want to shit on the dead here, but I'm just saying. Oh yeah. Uh, well, he I had a nice what, house. I mean, well, I mean. I mean, I, I know far less talented people with nice houses. That's true. But uh, <laughs> I, I don't really know the guy, but condolences. And then we get to another guy that I only knew one song by him, but I always posted it because I thought it was cool. You know, uh, I'll start on this one and go to you, Jerry Dex. Uh, Mojo Nixon, Mr. Elvis is Everywhere, uh, <laughs> songwriter, singer. I thought he was cool. Condolences to you and your family. You made me laugh. That song was fucking awesome. What do you think about that, Jerry? The only reference to Mojo Nixon that I know of is that uh, punk rock girl song by fucking, uh, who was that? The, the Dead Milkman. The Dead Milkman. That's the only yeah. time I've ever heard that name. I had no idea yeah. who this guy is. Most so. people are the same way. You never heard Elvis no, is there alone. everywhere? Nope, never heard I'm going to send I mean, that I to know you. The, I know the song because I was, I was heavy on MTV in the 90s. So I remember when Mojo Nixon hit and I was like, who the fuck is this guy? I didn't care for the song, but again, an another death, and it's not, you know, uh, probably too young. I don't know how old the guy was. Either I didn't look but, that up. My bad. It's all good. It doesn't matter. It's still, it still sucks. I mean, whenever anybody dies, unless it's Hitler or something of that equivalence. That's funny. I told that to people today. I said, if Hitler's the only one you should be happy that died, or Mussolini. <laughs> uh, equivalent. I mean, there are yeah. Hitlers out there right now. That should yeah. be buried under a building like that's but I, I don't know who they are and I don't wish for them. Like I don't wish for death. I, I don't just that's not true. I was driving earlier today and I wished multiple people deaths, but <laughs> not like actively. Like I didn't know them. It didn't matter. It's what it is. Oh, no. Oh, I, you, I use wish, your turn signal. I wish, you cut know, me I, off, you fucking bitch. Brother, <laughs> no, I wish I wish glorious very very graphic deaths on people as i'm driving it's fantastic well, i'm gonna do a, i'm gonna do a tiktok series at some point where i'm just gonna videotape me driving and it's it, it's i do it for my own comedy and for whoever's in the car with me because i would never I, I don't have like actual road rage but 
it's almost just to make me laugh. Yeah. I try to see uh, how quick I can come up with some outlandish <laughs> shit. It's great. I was gonna say, do I want to be in a car with you? <laughs> yes, you do. I'm a very good driver. I just I just say outlandish shit and I sing an air drum. That's what I do. Yeah. So, air drum uh, while you're driving. Man, I'm, <laughs> I'm a champion air drummer on the oh. steering wheel, boy. Whew. I'm, I Neil, I'm the Neil. Pe- I'm the Neil Peart of the Northeast I, uh, steering wheel drum competition. You have some, no idea. Somebody gave me drumsticks for my birthday one time, and I had one on the passenger seat all the time. I kept banging on a dash till it cracked. Well, that's a little ridiculous. Well, I, I didn't know it was that. gonna crack. That was my you first car. It was eighteen. Thing, well, I had the other arm on the wheel, but the I had a real stick on the one. <laughs> nothing more, nothing more annoying than a, a drummer in a band. They're the most annoying member of a band, dude, because they always have their stick with them. They're always twirling them, hitting shit with what them. What are you talking about? You guitar players sit there and just they take their guitars with no, them. No, they do play. not. Yes, they do. I was in a lot of bands. We've I, never I, sat I heard John Five always has a guitar with him. I heard those. Well, that's John Saturani Five. always has a guitar with him, like big Jerry, guitar. People Jerry who made one, it. Jerry one doesn't carry a guitar with him everywhere. Well, Jerry, so. you're 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 not those guys. You keep practicing and practicing. That's why they always have. The, that's why they made it. Yeah. Dude, Did you practice that much? Yeah, one time. Okay. Well, good for you. All you know, all, 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 I never practiced. I, I've never. Played, I never practiced. I I never played Jerry. So you, you you're better than I am. I'm just fucking with you, brother. In every band I've ever been in, the guitarist has been a fucking head case. Really, and, always, and it always oh, is always and it's always about my music, my music, my music. Well, my music, that's a different story. Music, I'm talking my music. I don't like when people do things with my music, my music, my music. So, like, God forbid, a singer comes no. in and has ideas yeah. and can play other instruments and goes, "Hey, I have an idea for this song," and they go, "No, no, no, it's my music, it's my music." And I get it. Basis, I get bassists it. give less than a fuck usually. Some of them are a little my music too, but usually bassists don't care. They're just the most chill people ever. They just want to get laid and get drunk. That's usually what they do. Drummers want to be singers. Singers want to be drummers. That's usually the way it goes. Dude, nothing more annoying than fucking you're driving, your drummer's in the back seat, down the fucking cushion in the back fucking seat, dude. It's annoying as hell, man. All right, man. Did you know Mojo Nixon, Andy? Um, No, not at all. Just the song that Jerry would, was I was referring to. I'm going to send you both Elvises. I'll just put it in a group. Yep. Elvises yeah. everywhere. I, I'll delete that right away. Don't even bother. Oh, oh okay, Mooger. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother. Don't even... All right, but let's get to the one guy I think we all know. I made a short video of him for this channel. Uh, Carl Weathers, man. He passed, man. Action Chubb. Jackson. Chubbs. Oh, I love Action yep. Jackson. The That's master a... of disaster. Chubbs. The king of sting. Man, fucking... What yeah, a cool I'll dude never, he was. I'll man. never forget the day. It's almost like uh, it's, it's he's already died because when Drago knocked him out, that was it, man. Yeah. Pretty much he's so. He's been yeah. dead to me since then. Really? <clears throat> yeah. But, yeah, I but it was know. just I mean, an exhibition. I mean, I guess I saw him. My it's funny because generationally it's interesting. My kids were sad that the dude from the Mandalorian died. Like that was <laughs> their thing. Yeah. Yeah. So genera- generationally that dude yeah. translated like somehow. Like I don't know how, yeah. but he did. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, rest in peace, Carl Weathers. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. sucks. I mean, I still watch a Rocky movie at least once every couple of weeks, or not even maybe once a month. Maybe a Rocky movie comes out. Oh I'll really? Oh, if if they have seen... like if they have all five in a row, I'll watch them. The ones after, well, I don't, well, actually the first four, Rocky Five was kind of flaky. I have them all. But, oh, um... but it's so much fun though. Touch me and I'll sue. Oh, yeah. fucking Rocky Five rules, man. Like five. I, I like, like Rocky, Rocky Five. Tell me, tell me, we were. We were wasn't like, that dude? We were wasn't like that dude on Seinfeld? Man. Was that the same dude that was on a couple episodes? Yeah, of Jackie Seinfeld? Childs. Jackie yeah, Childs. Yeah, the black guy. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, Jackie, Jackie Childs. Childs. Yeah, that's Jackie Childs. Childs. Touch me, touch me, and I'll sue. And then yeah. not for nothing, <laughs> but Rocky Balboa is a fucking fantastic movie. Rocky Balboa yeah, was is good. a really, really good movie. My goodness, I know. Car- I know we're straying way from Carl Weathers. I have them all. Long dead. But yeah, Rocky Balboa was a great movie. Fantastic. Probably better than. Mo- I mean, not from an entertainment standpoint because you can't go wrong with Rocky Four or Rocky Three for that matter. But like, f- as far as like filmmaking goes, Rocky Balboa is probably the best movie since Rocky Two in reality. Yeah. Like in terms of filmmaking, like in terms of like quality movie, like that that hoity-toity cork sniffer shit. Um, Rocky Balboa is like a, a legit movie, and they and they had him lose. I don't mean the spoiler alert, but he didn't win the fight, which is fucking great. Yeah. He knocked him down, though. He knocked him down. Yeah, but I would have been so pissed if he would have won that fight. I would have been. I would too. Yeah. So if I was Antonio Tarver in real life, I'd be like, "Fuck off! I'm not (laughs) losing to a 60 year old." (laughs) 
Yeah, I haven't seen Creed two yet, but I've seen all of them. So. Oh, Creed two is good. It's not as good as the. Is it Creed two or three? Creed on, three. The Creed one. three. Well, I'm three right now. Okay. Well, three. Yeah, I've seen the first two. Though. Three. Uh, Stallone is an inner. It's it's a little less yeah. than the other two. I think it. They need to bring Stallone back. Uh, yeah. I love the actor though, man. He's great. I just like that thing. Oh, Michael Jordan. I Michael but I just like that that trainer teacher thing that he that Rocky was passing along to Creed's son. Yeah, that was fucking pretty cool. You know what? Who's the who's the guy who trained him? Rocky Burgess Mickey. Meredith. Mick. 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 You're gonna eat lightning oh. and crap thunder, Rock. Yeah. To this to this day, one of the saddest Get moments of my entire life. One of the saddest <laughs> moments of my entire life was when Mick died in, in Rocky Three. Yeah. Mick. Yeah. Like he, I don't, he I don't know if speaking. Just, yeah, I don't know if Burgess Meredith ever got nominated for an Academy Award, but she should have got at least nominated for that fucking role as Mickey. I think he was awesome. Dude. Get off, yeah. Rocco. Great. My favorite Mickey Twilight Zones are with him. <laughs> God damn, love that actor. Dude, if 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 Burgess Meredith didn't get nominated for Rocky One, then how the fuck did Pat Morita get nominated for Karate Kid? So he did get he did get nominated. Burgess Meredith? I don't no. know, but I know Pat oh, Morita okay. did, and he was awesome in Karate Kid. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. Let me look. Oh, it up. Really? I'll look. I'll look it up while you guys move on to the next. Thing. Any thought? Well, Andy hasn't talked about Carl Weathers. You too. I oh, have not right. and... about Carl Weathers. I did not know that he played with the Raiders. I had no idea. I didn't know either. Played with the Raiders? Yeah. Yeah. He was the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. He was. Really? The, he was a linebacker like for two years, oh, um, between seventy and seventy-one, I think, and then and then after that he got hurt and and went into acting. And then he was I, on several black black exploitation movies. Yeah. Well, after then, he retired three years later, he was in Rocky. So yeah, yeah. The first the first movie I ever saw him in was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That's the first movie I ever saw him in. Then I saw oh, him wow, really? as a follow Creed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a small role in Close Encounters. He was like an army guard or something. Yeah, but, but yeah, I was, mean, he was so cool as Apollo Creed. One of the most boringest role, movies of all yep, time. He was, Close uh, Encounters. Just just to uh, just to confirm, Meredith. Burgess Meredith was uh, twice nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in 1976 for Rocky and 1975 for Day of the Locust. So cool. there you go. Awesome. At least he was okay. so, Yeah, yeah. Um, he so, really should have. So, and so then, that makes uh, so that makes mm-hmm. Pat Morita make sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I really um, liked him in Action Jackson. I loved that movie when I was a kid. I still Vanity. like to watch it. I thought he was fantastic in <laughs> um in um uh, and, Billy Madison? And, uh, Madison, yeah, no, no, no Happy, Happy Gilmore, Gilmore. <laughs> Happy Gilmore, Happy Gilmore. Thank you. I know, I'm just joking. He was fantastic. I thought, I thought he was playing the perfect role. He was a straight man that was hilarious. So, um, and he died because of an alligator. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Like, yeah. You sure? Are, you sure? Are, that are fucking so, weird. That was, weird wooden hand he had. Wow. <laughs> Carl Weather. He, Carl- uh, he was fixing it <laughs> while he was watching TV. <laughs> Carl Weather's <wasn't laughs> it. with wood glue. Yeah. And you know what? And you know what's interesting here? I didn't know that Carl Weather's was a linebacker. Yeah. Right. And Happy Gilmore actually makes a, like a statement about that when. When Chubbs comes up to him and goes, yeah, I'm the golf pro here. I was going to play, you know, prof- I was professional golfer, the whole thing. And Happy Gilmore, Adam Sandler goes, golf, you look like you could be a linebacker. Oh, he actually cool. says that in the movie. And yeah. I, I, it, uh, that's fucking hilarious. And he said, no, because because uh, mom, my mom didn't want me to get hurt. And then he pointed at his hand and said, oh, yeah, good call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chubbs, oh shit! Man. Chubbs wow, rules. check this out. So, yeah. so in his first season, he played seven games, helping the Raiders win the AFC West division title. This is fucking phenomenal. This is fantastic. On their way yeah. to the first ever AFC Championship game, um, before the 1971 season, Weathers converted to strong safety. He played only one game in 1971 before the Raiders released him after Coach John Madden told Weathers, "You're just too sensitive." <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Well, what college did he go to? Did, Matt goes, um, boom, did he go to you're San Diego State? Uh, did he go to San Diego State or Arizona San State? San Diego State, yep. San Diego State, okay. I knew it was one of those. Okay. Hey, but just just remember, Chubbs did come back in Little Nicky. <laughs> of course he did. I never I love that movie. fucking movie, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I Little love Nicky's Little very Nicky. underrated. I we've love only, We've only just begun. Oh, shit. No, the best part of that movie, when they go, 
Chicago sucks, man. He goes, look at this. And he plays it backwards. Satan is good. Hail Satan. Is- Chicago <laughs> rules, man. <laughs> like One of my favorite scenes of all time in the movie, his friends just go, Chicago rules, man. But they were- that's just, Happy Gilmore, man. I tell you, who was great in that was Scott, uh, was Scott McDonald. Is that his name? Yeah. Uh, Shooter uh, McGavin. Shooter McGavin. Shooter McGavin. Shooter McGavin. Oh, guy was- <laughs> Oh, fucking guy was hilarious in that role. Dude. I eat pieces yeah. of shit like you for breakfast. You, you eat pieces, pieces of, of shit, shit for breakfast? No. <laughs> and, and interestingly enough, since we're talking about Carl Weathers, Carl yeah. Weather, Carl Weathers, um, he actually he filmed a fall stunt in Happy Gilmore, and he fractured two of his vertebrae Ooh, during the shit. movie. Yeah, oh, the he, fog, said, he said right. it cost him three to four years of excruciating pain. Oh shit. Yeah, wow. that's crazy. Damn. I'm learning all kinds of stuff about Carl Weathers. <laughs> all right. So before we get into any other BS, Chris, you had a BS topic, man. Okay, yes. I well, it's not a it's not a BS topic. It's actually very interesting. Um, so I have a question for the three of you music fans out here. And I don't know how many concerts each of you go to. I know Mark, you and I have talked a lot. You 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 worked a venue for a long time, right? So you've been to a fair amount, I would imagine. I never worked a venue. I just I, I did. I thought you did. I thought you worked. Maybe that's that Jerry. I'm thinking Jerry. Of. Yeah. Yeah. One of you works security or something for a venue and whatever. Anyway, anyway, what would you prefer? So picture, if you will, a legendary band and that legendary band is old. They've been around a while and they're doing like a final tour or whatever. And their lead singer is not so great anymore because he's fucking old. Right. And like, just voices wear out. It's not like playing any other instrument other than maybe drums. You have to rely on your body. Okay. 100%. So what would you prefer happen in this situation? Would you prefer some sort of backing track to assist the lead singer so he can continue to do what he's doing and make it through? Or would you rather the lead singer just kind of dip here and there but have a strong supporting backup singer backup singers in the band to where he can just kind of dip in and out and do the best that he can as he's going along well, well i'll take that first i'll i'll take okay go ahead mark you go first i'm just saying i'll take the freaking uh backup singers man let him dip because he would know he's old and the backup singers it's like we want well i do i want richie sambora to go back with uh, bon- with John, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen because Phil X already worked on their new album. So I was kind of disappointed when I heard that. I wanted Richie back because he helps John with his vocals a lot. But yeah, I would take the second option. Yeah, I agree. Case in point for me would be I saw Meatloaf like a year or two before he died. I mean, he gave 100% of what he had left, you know, but without the, you know, he had talented musicians and singers around him that made him sound good. Um, so yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with Mark on that one. And every because, once in yeah, a while, he would hit a note or something, right? And you'd be like, oh, there's me, yeah. Wolf. He sounds great. Yeah, right? he was there. He, yeah. Like I said, man gave 100% everything. He gave it all on the stage every night he performed, in my opinion. I mean, he's one of the best entertainers in rock music history, in my Meatloaf, opinion. No joke. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I agree with Mark. I think a well, well, bad case in Fort would be Don Dawkins. I mean, he sounded terrible. I don't he's think awful. he had any background. Oh, tape, Paul Stanley so. from Kiss. He's another Paul one. Paul Stanley, like, yes, shit. exactly. Same You're shit. right. Always so, yeah. got to get some Kiss news in here. Always. You know, if, if I was their live vocals, man, I know people a lot of you tapes. I know it's it's a controversial thing, but I definitely prefer the live vocals, background vocals. You know. Oh uh, yeah, I am exactly the same way. I'd rather see see the live show. Like um, one of the last times that I saw um Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. He sang the best that he could, but he had backing vocals with him. He had Al Jardine with him. Mm. So it's so to see a live live performances and live music is what you go for. Backing tracks, I know that they do it, but you can tell. You know, it kind of brings you down. And I would rather have the original singer than have some young young singer take take over i'd rather see the original if the original is able gotcha. to be up there singing That's yeah because the way I would do it too. because just for the record like i don't have a problem with backing tracks i can't stand when people deny it or they right. rail on go. other people but i just saw mr big this week and yeah. they were they were killer like they they were, they were fucking incredible like the, the whole show was insane i'm seeing the may 11th you're in for a show eric martin 
whose vocals are very challenging with Mr. Big. Not easy. Okay. As a singer myself, I can sing all of Eric Martin's stuff, but after about five, six, seven songs in, I get exhausted. It's, it's, it's a high register. Dude's having a hard time. Like he's get, but, but they hired Nick D Virgilio to play drums yeah, from so Spock's beard. He was their lead singer. He was Spock's lead singer for, for 10 years. Plus he's a phenomenal drummer. So he helped out a lot and Eric Martin dipped a lot. And I was like, at first I was like, Oh my God. I'm like, that's kind of shitty. But then halfway through the show, I was like, no, this is working. Like this is really, really good. Eric Martin hit the notes he could hit. He, he, he fiddled around with like, you know, they, they down to a lot of shit, but, um, but like he made it through and I was not unsatisfied by that. And extreme did the same thing with Gary Sharon more or less because the four, the three of those guys can sing behind Gary Sharon and Gary Sharon, I think sounded a little better than Eric Martin, but still same, same premise. Like these really talented bands, which seem to have like no ego. It seems like Billy Sheep. In Paul Gilbert, these guys went up there and like they had like no ego about them. They were just so gracious and so cool. And it's like the complete opposite. I, I know we Mark is like, oh, we have to bring Kiss up, but Kiss is the most recent and most annoying example. Or let's go a different direction. Dream Theater. Dream Theater is the most annoying example of this because they're not even pretending to be close to done. And James Labrie is fried as fuck. And that's why I'm so glad Mike Portnoy is coming back because now he can help John Petrucci sing back up as opposed to just John and just James. I don't know what they were going to do. I think that's one of the main reasons why Portnoy is coming back is because of his vocals. That. I was just so, thinking that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. But I get really, really frustrated with uh, being a singer myself and looking up to these guys, I get very frustrated when they can't do it. So I was super impressed, you know, with Mr. Big, with what they did with Eric Martin, how they mitigated that situation. And to be fair, Eric Martin didn't sound like he couldn't hit the notes. And I think that's what's interesting. Like there wasn't a point where I was like, wow, he's really struggling to hit that note. Like, because he was rested. So he hit the notes he wanted to hit. It was really good. It was just really good. So I thought that was an interesting question to pose to music fans. I've been asking people yeah. since I saw the show on Tuesday. So yeah. very cool. Thank you. Thank you for weighing in. Very good question. So then yeah. I'll, I'll get to the next story, which, uh, we haven't had Journey news here in a while, but there's been talk that Arnell was getting replaced by Journey, but uh, Neil Sean issued a following statement. Dear friends, this message is to dispel any idiotic, relentless, rag, mag bullshit coming from ex-managers about me replacing Arnell. Arnell, Arnell is not leaving the band. <laughs> and well, Arnell, actually, Woody. Arnell actually, I mean, I, came out and said that too. Yeah. So the the room the rumor was Skid Rose lead singer is supposed to take his spot. That's what yeah. I heard. <laughs> that was the rumor. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I if mean, anybody's Ar gonna take his place. It's got to be Hugo from either Valentine. Fucking a, dude. He looks more like Steve Perry. Dude, Steve he Perry. looks like he looks just like Steve Perry. I think I've told this story on this very podcast. Yeah. When I saw Voyage, when I saw Voyage at M three Festival. I was like four rows back and I was squinting going, is that fucking Steve Perry? Are you kidding me? And he sounds like him. He looks like him. How he didn't get hired by journey is a fucking mystery to me. No, on the interview, Neil Schoen said, it was just too creepy, man. I mean, he, he couldn't do it. It was, <laughs> it was too much like Steve Perry, man. He couldn't do it. That's what he said. I guess I could see that. I guess I could see that. <laughs> All right, man. So, uh, I don't Maybe. know why they would ever replace Arnell. I, I, that, that would, nah. be, like, it, that guy can't possibly have a personality problem. No. He, he must feel like the luckiest man on the planet. Exactly. Earth. I mean, he was there's living no on the streets. Guy, yeah. There's no him. way that guy is like, fuck you really? guys. I'm too big for you. Yeah. Like, what is, he gonna go to? Is, he, is he going to go out on the street talk tour next? Yeah. Right. <laughs> That last no, game, he, that... he sounded he sounded he sounded great in the in, in the the playoff game. I love that weeks. Jerry I got mean... that. Did anybody else get that? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said he's gonna go out on the street, street talk, talk tour next. Oh yeah, I get that, Steve Perry. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, oh, Sherry. that's a fucking great joke. I don't care who you are. I love that album too. <laughs> it's a good but, uh, song. I love Arnell. 14, I like the I like the albums he's people... made with Journey. Pretty good stuff, man. <laughs> Yeah. 14 people out there got it. I felt like I had to explain it, but that shit was great. Jerry, no, I, 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 I knew it. I, I just didn't yeah, hear you. I, got it. I was trying to, since Jerry and uh, you talked about, I was trying to get to Andy here. What do you think no, about uh, that? I did not talk about it. Well, talk okay. about it. You and Chris are talking, so go ahead. Talk about it. I'm sorry, Andy. Go ahead. You go first, man. You go. I really have, have nothing to say because right now, 
it's hard to believe anything Neil Sean says. He was going back and forth on so much stuff in the middle of last year. So, you know, there's no reason to even replace Arnell. And Arnell, like y'all said, he, you know, he stays in line and he, and he does his job. Listen, Neil so. Sean loves himself. Neil Sean <laughs> loves Neil Sean. Oh, oh my God, does he love Neil Sean? God, Neil Sean loves Neil Sean so much that I think if he had, if he could, he'd fuck himself. Neil Sean <laughs> loves Neil. I have never seen more guitar masturbation during a show in my <laughs> life. I love it though. That's oh, fucking amazing. Much, That's like the, like a jam, dude. dude just who's goes crying off. now should never be a fucking thirteen minute song. I ever. love it. <laughs> That is fucking amazing. That, that fucking that kill me. That you could have heard. Though. I could have heard two other Journey songs in that time. Yeah. Fuck that. Well, oh, cut no. out the Journey nah, the, song. Nah, the works is fucking Jonathan King's fucking ten minute keyboard fucking. Oh, that that, that could go. That away. drives me more fucking. That nuts. could go away. Leave Neil's guitar alone. No, stop. I, every other hey, what song. Happened, what, happened, what happened to Randy Jackson, man? I thought he was in Journey, man. What happened to him, dude? He was the dog. Out. He's not he the dog. He was he wasn't with them that long when they he was on brought... the album. He did record the last no, he was, album. He was with the, he was with them during COVID. I, they got a video of him well, playing I, with him. I think he's got that name that tune shit going on. He doesn't have I know, time God, he's seen him. He looks like he's 10 pounds now. You seen him? Yeah. I know he was he was in the band during the raised on the radio. Yeah, they oh, were yeah. Yeah. with that big fro. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he was a pretty I heavy remember. dude, and he's wearing he's wearing these really uh bright Leather. colors too. It's, yeah, yeah. I remember the I'll be, I'll be all right without you video, and I was yeah. like, "Yeah, oh, oh, that's such that a guy. good song." I'm like, "That's not Ross Valerie." I'm like, "That's not Ross Valerie." Where the fuck did that guy go? <laughs> well, Steve Perry did regret getting rid of them. So, Jerry, uh, Neil, what? Sean, man. Yeah, I, I, you know, like Chris said it all. He is full of himself, but I love Neil Sean, man. I mean, I do. Uh, Great guitarist. I'm not. It's fucking. Him. You know, I can't stand Jonathan Kane for a lot of reasons, but if I had, I, I don't know what exactly he did with the. Uh, Fucking um, uh, Greg Raleigh with that video thing that's kind of fucked up, I guess. I don't know because I was really hoping they would do more concerts together, you know. Uh, Journey Three Times stuff, I would have loved some to have good seen shit. That. But you know, I mean, Arnell's, you know, he's he's earned his place in the band, man. He's probably been with them longer than any singer he's right now. Phenomenal, dude. I saw him he's, live twice and he's yeah, fucking mind blowingly good. And he's fucking energetic. He gets into the crowd, he gets the crowd going. I mean, and you know. And hats off to Dean Castronova, too. That motherfucker can sing, dude. <laughs> I mean, when you hear him sing Mother Father, it's like, is that Steve Perry up there singing? That's I mean, one it's of my incredible. Favorite songs. They're doing a stadium tour this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, They're touring with, with, uh, with who? I forgot. Def Leppard. Def Leppard. Def Leppard. Oh, no, it's not Def Leppard. Oh, no, yeah, it's Def Leppard. It's Def is Leppard. Is it Def Leppard yeah. again? Def Leppard. Yeah. We got, yeah, we got, that tour. we, yeah, we hey, got they, Steve they, Miller. They, Def Leppard was trying to get the fuck away from Motley Crue, so that you can't blame them for that. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got Steve Miller in art in Nashville. I don't know what you guys got out there, but we got Steve it's Miller. Steve Miller here. I ain't going because SoFi sucks. That acoustics is the worst venue I've ever heard a show at. Is it bad there, really? Oh, it's horrible at SoFi. Wow. That's surprising. It's the worst. Dude, I could barely hear shit on the stadium tour. Oh, Nissan. Nissan Stadium, man, the sound is incredible in there, dude. It really oh, is. Fuck, SoFi sucks. You know why? Because the Rams play there, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm lucky. I, I'm lucky. I have MSG, so uh, I have Madison Square Garden. Yeah, that's yeah. a bucket list place for me to go, man. See something Woo, there. It's a great I've place never, to see a show, boy. I'm going yeah, to I'm see. Sure it uh, is. I'm probably gonna waste my time, but Coheed and Cambria is opening for Incubus there, so I hate Ooh, Incubus, I but. Oh, I like I'm gonna go Tony Cabrio is pretty good. I know you're oh. too, yeah. Uh, they're one of my that's favorites. I haven't heard in a while. But, I, uh, they're, they're one of my favorites, and getting to see them play the big bowl at Madison Square Garden will be worth it. Even if they're only going to play for 45 minutes or an hour, it's worth it. So, yeah, my two bucket place places are MSG and uh, 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 the Hollywood and, Bowl. That's another place I want to see a show eventually. Oh, I, I, saw, I, I saw two shows at the Hollywood Bowl. I saw your favorite band there, Jerry, Duran Duran. Yeah. And then I saw yeah. The Who. They were both. It's a great. It's a good venue, man. The Who, the who yeah. <laughs> and uh, so guess who? Mr. Guess who? Guess who opened the for the Who? Song. Guess who opened for the Who there, Jerry? Guess who opened for the Who? Wow. Guess who opened cool it? No, not the guess, guess who. who. <laughs> it was. Uh, I'm bummed. I see. What Le you did there. Liam Gallagher. Yikes. Liam Gallagher opened for the he was really good. He did a lot of Oasis songs. I I of enjoyed. Of course, it. he's really good. He's a really good musician. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> not surprised. But let's get to uh, the next story here. Uh, I fucking kiss. Why kiss? But this is kind of kiss Why are they they Ace Fraley. Used. I would have liked to go on the road with Kiss one last time, but it wasn't to be, oh, Jerry. Shut the fuck up. Do you know how he's being more mouthy now? Not this over because he knows his chance is gone, so he's he's just letting it all out finally. You know what? You know what? Ace has entered Paul Stanley fucking territory now, man. He's just bitter. I mean, I just you know, and his new music sucks. It's not good. He's going through the motions. He has not been good live from what I've seen since the Alice Cooper show. I mean, I've seen videos all the time, and he just, just, just not into it anymore. It seems like talking about a singer that's just going through the motions. It's Ace Freely right now, and that's sad because he's one of my favorite musicians of all time. But man, Ace, shut up, dude. Sick, move on, man. At least Peter Chris took the high road and just shut up. You know what I mean? Eventually, so yeah. man, Which thank is God great it's because, over. Which is great because Peter Chris lives in Paul Stanley's head rent free forever. True. <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll go next i'm just gonna say i kind of understand ace he's been getting bullied his whole life and kiss and now he's fucking finally given his side of the story like me so go fucking cool. you got fucking ace rules fuck all you i like the new shit it fucking I'm rules not surprised I, ace fucking has a okay. great backing band he has great backing singers that fucking pick him up, like we were just uh, talking about. So he I get like back it. with Todd Howarth. That's what he should do. Oh, he Howarth is fake. great. We had him on the ep- we had him on Freeform. Todd Howarth, pretty good, nice dude, man. Uh, man, Chris, what do you think about this? Uh, this I I really can't say much more about Kiss anymore. Honestly, like this is just this is old hat shit. Um, I don't know why it, this was even news this week that Ace even opened his fucking trap. Like, nobody cares. Of course you'd want to, like, <clears throat> duh. Like, oh, you, <laughs> let, let me get this, let me get this straight. You'd want to go on a tour where you're going to make probably a cool mill as opposed to playing clubs where you're going to have 150 people in front of you. Yeah. Like, that's a big shock. Like, anybody surprised by this revelation? What? <laughs> Ace, you wanted to go on the tour the whole time? Why didn't you say something? <laughs> exactly. Come on, Come on. Paul and Gene would not dude needs have to, brought dude him needs on to, there. Listen, listen, Ace Gene would have. I think Gene right, would have. Right? Ace needs to write a book, and it needs to be called, ah, that's what it needs to be called, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you need to, <laughs> that's what you if need it was to up to Gene, I think Gene would have had Ace back. Paul, not a chance. But it's Paul's band. It was, it's been a band think, for 20, 30 years. I think, I, I said it in my last, I have a video, for those who are watching, I have a video on i actually have five videos about kiss on my channel one is a four-part series called fandom files and then i did a follow-up to kind of bookend this shit and end it and talk about this tour this this last show and all that shit and ultimately upon further review as much as i love the original four as much as i love like, i wish they would have done something on the last two shows at least there was no way that these four were going to tour again. Ever, ever, ever. The best that you could have ever hoped for was them showing up for the last show or the second to last show, or the last two shows or something, throwing them up on stage, having them play a few songs. Ace and Peter, like Peter's old as fuck. He barely could play the drums the last time around. He definitely can't do it anymore. Ace, on the other hand, he's just a problem. He's just a problem. And to... To Paul and Gene's credit, they made it without those two guys going forward, right? So good for them. That's wonderful. You did the fans dirty by not even having them show up the last show because they would have showed up. I, if I was Paul and Gene, I would have paid sure. whatever it took to get Ace there, or to get Ace and Peter there. What, you want a mill? Here's a mill. Show up. Could yeah, you Peter imagine? Could, Peter, Peter could have sang. You're right. He didn't have to play yeah. drums. Could you Ooh. imagine? Could you imagine the legend that would have been created if Ace and Peter would have walked out for the encore of the final fucking show? But no, we had to do the the same exact show they've been doing for seven months and end with cartoons. This is the kiss way. Okay. Yeah. Another kiss rant from Redbeard videos. I'm done talking about them. Andy, any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I saw Ace Freely, I think in 27, no. I've been 2018. That was Alice Cooper, right? No, no. Uh, this was with Accept. Oh, okay. With Accept and um and um Pat Travers. 
Right. Ooh, I love that, Travers. But by the time that Ace came out, I'm, I was drunk. I was ready to go home. And when he started playing, hey, so I was said, Ace. That's perfect. Right. I was all like, yeah, <laughs> I can go home now. You know, I, I was all, I've seen enough. <laughs> and um, I think I almost threw up on um, Eddie Trunk. Hey, so did Ace. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so did Ace. Actually, Ace probably has once in his life. So yeah, yeah and, and look, don't don't be don't misunderstand. I love Ace for he's one of my all time favorite musicians, and he's my favorite member of Kiss, hands down, without question. But he's a problem. He's he's obviously the problem in that relationship. Paul and Gene are snooty fucking old men. I get it, but he's obviously not tolerable with that band. That's just what it is. So you know now uh, now that he's talking that. He wish that he would have been on there. Well, I'm pretty sure he's just bringing more nice. light to this album. That's yeah. me and Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's young Paul. Chris. Look at 2008. Really... That was 2008. Yeah. I am waiting. I'm waiting since I know they still have a business relationship technically still, but I'm waiting for Paul and Gene to start trashing each other because I know it's going to happen sooner or later. I guess there's really young Chris, really young Chris with Paul Stanley. Nice. Look at that, that hair. Was, that was 1992. <laughs> Damn. God damn nerds! Oh shit, that was right. That was was that the, was that the, that was the Rock the Nation year? Or was that still the farewell tour? Nineteen ninety two. That was that was Kiss. Oh, ninety two. That's yeah, duh. Never mind. Yeah, yeah that was Kiss. I'm thinking two thousand. I'm sorry, not ninety, dumbass. not ninety two. Yeah, ninety two. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I was All thinking right. two thousand two. That's cool bad. that you took pictures with them. You know, you're just you know that's your favorite band. Well, th this is something I posted about on the groups and Chris was talking or in some in one of the chat groups or in the group. I'm still, I love Stevie Nicks. I made a video about it. And I think Lindsey Buckingham was fucked over by her. And he he says <laughs> he remains disappointed in the way he was dismissed from Fleetwood Mac, but continues holding out hope that he and the group may tour together one last time. What do you mm. think about that, Jerry? Oh, I mean, they did tour without Christine in the past. I have the yes. shirt without Christine. Um, I saw that tour, yeah. I don't know about that now because she's not with us, but... You know, I mean, you you were upset about Lindsay being kicked out, but the average Fleetwood Mac fan going to go see Fleetwood Mac would rather see Stevie Nicks than Lindsay Buckingham. So. That's not me. I like Lindsay. Oh, I, I would love Lindsay. He's one of my favorite guitarists, yeah, but the too. majority would would love to see Stevie Nicks instead of Lindsay. And I think she was definitely the one behind the shots of getting him fired. Oh, I mean, time. so um. Yeah, I mean, it takes two guys to replace Lindsay. That tells you how fucking good he is. He does have backing guitars in the background, though. But still, I'm just saying. Um, Both times, I, I mean, he's just he was. The last time I saw him, their last tour together, man, he did not leave the stage one time. Everybody else left for a few minutes, but he was on the stage the whole two and a half hours, just fucking cranking, dude. He was awesome live, and um, I don't know how I would feel about a reunion. I mean, I'd probably go and see it. To be honest with you, it was a. Uh, if they did Christine, you know, justice. Yeah, I probably would go see it. I saw them without on the Say You Will stuff and yeah, the EP they the, made. So I saw them on the EP they made without her. It was really good. Lindsay was amazing. Mick Fleetwood, underrated drummer. Nobody talks about him at all. You got, that great, you got that great rhythm section of John McVie and Mick Fleetwood. Yeah, but I, I, hear John's, I hear John's in pretty bad health nowadays, too. So That's I don't think it's going to have it happen. Yeah. yeah. You have any thoughts on that, uh, Chris? I think Mick Fleetwood is uh, accurately rated exactly where he should be. Oh, yeah. um, yes. I think um, I'm more of a Christy McVie fan than I am a Stevie Nicks fan. Me too. Uh, so, and I've never seen Fleetwood Mac live and nor do I ever have a, a desire to not that I dislike them. I love a lot of their music. I've just never had that pull to want to see mm. them. So uh, I don't care one way or the other. <laughs> I really don't, um, you know, to me, to me, the best thing about Fleetwood Mac is um, Stevie Nicks and Christine McVie gave the playbook on how to accurately torture your men. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Rumors. Listen to it. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Lindsay said he's never going back again. So, you know, <laughs> you go your own way. I mean, I've been listen, down one, two times. I ain't listen, never the, going back again. The bottom line here, though, and that's a good quote, but the bottom line here is that these are all largely irrelevant people without each other. Like Stevie Nicks is a legend. Lindsey Buckingham is a legend. Why are they legends? Not because of anything yeah. they did by themselves. I don't know. Stevie had a pretty good solo career, man. 
after uh, Fleetwood Mac. Well, yeah, she, I mean, after Fleetwood Mac. Oh, yes, she's, absolutely. So she's a legend because of Fleetwood Mac. I mean, okay, that's what you mean. Okay, the, okay. At, at the end of the well, day, Tom Petty Lindsay helped Bur- her a little bit. At the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks are nobodies without each other. So, fair enough. Regardless More- of who did what to who, it, it's irrelevant. Because well, she wouldn't have been in Fleetwood Mac if Lindsay didn't say, Hey, you got to bring my girlfriend with me because we yeah. just did Buckingham Knicks, you know. Highly unlikely, which is a great I, album I it, people should check out. But I, yes, it is. But at a certain point, I'm willing to bet that they would have picked her anyway. I'm sure he had a part in it, but it wasn't just him going, Come on, guys, come on. Like, Stevie Nicks is a great singer and she was really, really attractive at the time. Oh, and God, the yes. idea of having the idea of having these three dynamic voices in this band, which was basically a blues rock outfit, yeah. you know, the whole point at, at the whole time, the, like the whole time up until that point. Um, it, 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 yeah. You added that, that pop infusion with those two people. I'm sure Lindsay said one or two things, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't think that, I don't L- think that Lindsay that. was the architect of that band sound. When they they came in that group, he directed that band. He was. Oh yeah, he was the yeah. main director of that band. If you listen to Buckingham Knicks, that is what Fleetwood Mac sound went to. I so, mean, again, Lin- Lindsey Buckingham I, look, is a I've, genius. I've had this discussion, but never about Lindsey Buckingham. It's always been Stevie Nicks versus Christy McVie. And at the end of the day, Christy McVie wrote more songs, sang almost as many hits as Stevie Nicks. Like Christy McVie has possibly one of their biggest hits which is little lies yeah. is one of their hugest hits in terms of charts in terms of recognize it you know everybody's heard that song well, the best song, song on there is big love though shit <laughs> not that version the the, the the solo version of him live is kick-ass just yeah. him and the acoustic but guitar I, I, I like how his back end vocals that's him sounding like a woman that was cool so, go, go but, uh, i mean christine man, don't stop that was Probably there's one of the, she, that's definitely incredible. a top five. Oh yeah, Christine, you know, even you, Songbird, Songbird, man, what a Lindsay fucking gorgeous Lindsay song co-wrote that was, "Don't man. Stop" with her, didn't he? No, I think it was just Christine Lindsay. Oh, just I... there's another song. What was the other song they sang? Do it together. Don't stop. Hold, hold me, hold me. Hold I think me, yeah. it did. They both sang that song. I mean, together, at I the think. at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, Christine McVie doesn't get the love she deserves. Well, in that I, band. I, I we agree. And that's why this whole Lindsay Stevie thing is irrelevant to me because that's well, what it's always been about. And that's because they're the prettiest ones in the band. I don't fucking know. Well, Christine was always the the one I didn't really listen to. I listened to Lindsay and Stevie, and then I mean, her later... solo album kills too. Christine McVie. Oh yeah, so. hold, uh, I like. Gotta I like hold her now. on me. I like her song, now, dude. but back then I was mainly skipped all her songs. I hate li- I hated Little Lies. Now I like it, but uh, I fucking love that song. Andy, uh, any thoughts on this? Don't stop is Christine McVie all the way. Huh? Yeah. Well, I'm like so. y'all said, you know. Um, I'm pretty sure Stevie had a lot to do with uh, Lindsay not coming back. Now, I've never seen um, Fleetwood Mac live, but I have seen Stevie play. Um, oh, well, she sang backing vocals with Tom Petty, the Heartbreakers. And I've seen Lindsay do a acoustic solo show, which That'd was pretty cool. cool. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. He even played, um, he even played the um, National Vacation song. Call it a <laughs> holiday. <laughs> holiday bro. I, I'm insane. Go go insane is a fucking great song yeah, too. too. Yeah, yeah, it is. But um, you know, if they got together, um, their ticket prices will be out of my range. Anyway. It, it, like I said, it won't happen. I think their health is, yeah. you know, like, like I said about John McVeigh's health. Is, I mean, Lindsay had a heart attack a few years ago. I don't know, dude. I don't, I just don't see it happening. Yeah, well, yeah. he was also in the Back to the Future soundtrack. <laughs> Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks is having a pretty good, successful tour on her own right now. So yeah. I yeah. Don't, is she putting yeah, out new music too? Finished touring with Billy Joel, so you know she's doing all right on her own. So Billy Joel's oh, touring with so. Sting now, man. I want to see that. Yeah. God dang! Stop, don't oh. play that new song. Okay, I song. okay. Look, I like I'm going to ask song. the Slayer fans in this group. What do you oh, guys think that. about the the new Carrie King? Love it. Absolutely fucking love it. Can't wait to hear more. Chris. Kerry King can't hear us. Okay. All right. Kerry King, Kerry King is a cancer on ah, metal. Okay. No. So, uh, when, once he said this is going to be like Slayer 2.0, I was like, A, who fucking asked for this shit? B, he's out there 
like dishing on Dave Lombard. Like, fuck that guy. Fuck Kerry King. He's the most obnoxious person this side of Dave Mustaine. Stop. <laughs> fuck. Him and Ted Nugent and fucking Dave Mustaine, they can all get in a bus and fucking go away. I thought we were done with this Slayer shit. My God. Keep hey, it fucking rocking, Kerry. Hey, you're you're speaking Scribble's language out there, man. He loves Dave Mustaine and Kerry King. <laughs> Dude, I fucking, I think Slayer is the most overrated fucking uh, shit band there is. I would rather spin Nelson than Slayer. My hey, God, I love Nelson. What? A, of course you do. What a fucking what? A, like, <laughs> like you're not I giving was, me any love. I was so glad. Here. Look, I finally gave Slayer credit for something Maybe for go going away, them. for going away and staying away. And now uh, they pulled a Motley Crew. It's not long before Tom Araya and the other fucking guys come back. I'm telling you, call fucking book it right now, 2025 nah, Tom, Slayer tour. Nah, Tom, Araya, Tom and Kerry don't get along anymore. He, it ain't gonna happen, dude. Gonna happen. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when when money. when the uh, no, no 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 yeah. Tom's exactly. got he's got when, money. He's got no, a no, family. No, he wants no. to be with his when kids. the promoters come around and hey guys, well it depends hey on guys, you, you know they would play another big four. Oh my Come god, on. they would do they would fucking tour tomorrow if they anybody asked for it. The problem is nobody fucking so. cares. Nobody wants Slayer anymore. <laughs> nobody. Thank God. See? Nobody asked for this shit. Nobody was sitting there going, I did. Hmm. I wonder what Kerry King is up to. Nobody. Nobody. Kerry. What about you, Andy? You know, I'm a very light um, Slayer fan. You know, I don't have, I've only got one of their albums and um, I've seen them live a couple of times because they were at the festival that I went to. And, you oh know, God, were Kerry, you bored to uh, death? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, no. That's what made me want to listen to them more because I thought they were fantastic live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Listen. Fantastic perhaps, live. Perhaps, perhaps it was the pairing. Okay. I have seen Slayer live more times than I fucking care to count, okay? I've had <laughs> fillings that were more entertaining than seeing Slayer live, okay? I saw Gojira open up for them, and my God, what an embarrassment for Slayer that was. Holy shit. I have never seen... I If I were Slayer after that show, I would have been... I went backstage, and I almost wanted to tell them because I was interviewing Joe Duplantier from Go. Jira. And I almost wanted to tell them, hi, hey, you guys are embarrassed. Are you embarrassed? How did you, how'd that feel? But I didn't because I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't say any of this in front of Kerry King because he's a big fucking dude. But <laughs> but I saw them and I had the thoughts. So like I said, I really enjoyed the two, the, the two shows that I saw them in and they really drew me in. Um, I thought they were fantastic live and um, I do need to get some more of their music. I really do. But you know, Kerry you King had a lot to do with their sound. So it's not like he's, you know, I mean, I mean, that is his sound. Should he just stop making music? No, of course not. And if he comes out, he's going to sound like Slayer because because he spent That's like, yeah. first years in Slayer. No, it's, it's like, like, it's like John like, Fogarty doing a solo album and sound like and David Phoenix. Gilmore. David, David Gilmore. Gilmore, Gilmore yeah. This new Pink Floyd sounds like David Gilmore. I'm like, who the fuck is it supposed to sound like? You know? Yeah, it's exactly. Carrie King barely wrote shit for Slayer. Okay, that's yeah, he did. One. He wrote a lot of stuff for Slayer. Yeah, Hanneman yeah. wrote almost everything. He did write. He, died. he did write until, a lot until he in the early almost, years. Not a lot. You sure? I'm you almost sure? positive. I'm almost. Positive. I'm not saying you're wrote 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 Hold on. Oh, yeah, but so, I had a show last night, so I had to leave. Okay. I know. <laughs> first, first album, Jeff Hanneman wrote four songs solo. Kerry King wrote two. And then the rest were the combination of the two. That's the first album. Hold up. Yeah. Hold up. That's Show No Mercy. Haunting the Chapel. Trap. Hell awaits. He wrote a lot. Kerry oh, King no, that's, did. That's they they both wrote cool together. Man. King and Hanneman wrote a lot yeah. together. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hell awaits. Here we go. So it's not like Kerry King is 
taking over and stealing from them. I mean, that's Hanneman, his sound. Hanneman, Hanneman, and, Hanneman, and he wants to Hanneman, 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 music. He wrote almost the whole fucking album. Fellow. Well, it's Hanneman King. Hanneman King. Hanneman no, King. Was, Hanneman no, he King. wrote almost all of it solo. Hold up. Hold up. And all the, lyri- all the lyrics are just about Carrie King. Just about. I don't know. I think it's he, he might have wrote more than fifty percent, but Kerry King did write, Hanneman, you know, his Hanneman, fair share. Hanneman, Hanneman wrote every song, and, and he's got every right, right to do what he's going to do. I agree. I agree. No, I yeah. look, look. Let me let, let me be straight. Let me be straight. I, Kerry King has every right to come out and do what he's going to do. What right. bothered me? What bothered me is that in an interview he came out and he said it's going to be an extension of Slayer. It's Slayer two point two oh, and that's that, what it's going to be. No, yeah, I no, mean, no, no, no. It should be Kerry King. I look if if James had he's using Slayer to get get footing with his fans. If, if yeah, yeah, fuck that. If you if you're if you're Kerry King and you cannot do it on your own, then don't. If Paul Stanley came out tomorrow and said, "I'm doing Kiss 2.0," I would kill myself. <laughs> like that would be awful. Stop it. I know if Paul Stanley comes out with something, it's going to sound like Kiss, just like if Kerry King comes out with something, it's probably going to sound like Slayer, right? Of course. But, but stop already. Stop. I mean, look, I have a different take on Slayer. I wish Kerry King and all of them would go away because I just don't like him. <laughs> I don't like his music. I don't like his personality. I don't like him, period. I just don't like it. But with that being said, I don't begrudge the guy an opportunity to work. Of course he's going to work. He's a creative force. Yeah. That's what he does, right? I'm not yeah. irrational. Actually, I am irrational. Fuck Slayer. Fuck Kerry King. And I hope they all go away. <laughs> well, and I love Morgan. Death Angels lead singer. I don't, I don't know Death Angels lead singer anything, but I love his voice. I think he can fucking wail, dude. So I anything, think he's got a good band with him. Anything else on that, Andy? No, I'm yeah, good. Sorry, Andy. I kind of steamrolled you there. Sorry, Andy. Andy. Oh, no. I didn't feel steamrolled at all. No. Nope. So uh, my thoughts right. on Kerry King, I don't give a fuck. The only thing I like Kerry King did was on License to Ill. <laughs> and <laughs> that's it. No, <laughs> please, still Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Don't know. I mean, that's his most famous thing when he had the big fucking nail. Doesn't the guy? Doesn't the guy's head fall off? Yeah, doesn't his head fall yeah. off. <laughs> License to ill by the Beastie Boys rule. Beastie <laughs> Boys rule. Run DMC I mean, too. Fucking love run DMC. Overrated guy in metal history. Jim. All right, oh. let's let's end strongly with, disagree. Let's end with which everybody loves. I mean, to no, hear. no, no. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't let this go. I can't let this go. When it's all said and done, and I hate Slayer. I I, I want to reiterate that over and over again. If I had a shirt that said Slayer sucks all the dicks, I would. But I would wear that shit. Out of those guys. Lombardo is one of the greatest drummers to ever fucking play in metal. Oh, I agree yeah, with he, you. He got the shit. So I, I agree. Jeff I Hanneman, mean... as much as I hate Slayer, that dude was a fucking dude. Okay. He was a bad motherfucker. Okay. Tom Araya, don't love his vocals, but he's great. He's he's fine. He's fine at what he does. Kerry King, ugh, yick. Like just big fat yick. Like, I just, I, I hope somebody mails this to him. And I hope he calls me or sends me a fucking message. He's like, I'm going to hunt your family. You show up at your door, man. He's yeah, not show up at your door. I would love that shit. Oh, my God. With a chain around his neck. <laughs> like the junkyard dog. I mean, his arm is as big as my head. Let's be real. His fucking biceps are as big as my head. So, like, I understand. He's a large dude. I, you know, but whatever. Anyway, right, I'm, done. I'm done. Well, Slayer let's... and Kiss off my fucking docket forever. Let's get, to, let's get to a little bit of sports here. I don't really like talking about my team. They are in the Super Bowl, the San Francisco 49ers. I don't like talking about them. I don't know if it's kind of like a jinx thing. I respect the Chiefs. I know Mahomes is going to be a hard task. For if, okay, teams. before you start, before you start, I'm sorry, dude. If I see one post in the first quarter, if the Chiefs get a touchdown, congratulations, Chiefs, you're the champions. I'm going to fucking... Fly to California and strangle you, dude. Don't, do you don't, don't, positive you know, then? Yeah, Gary, positive you, shit. Gary. Listen, and Mark, you're the most defeated fan I've flip. ever fucking seen in my life. Do oh you my guys, god! Do you guys realize <laughs> that that is a joke that started? I know, by I know, Dolph. dude. Mark, <laughs> you know that's Andy a joke. Was, you know that's Mark, a Andy joke. Say, and it gets know, you guys dude. going. And what happens usually when I say that? <laughs> Mark, they come back and win. Mark, I mean, Andy, 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 now you just fucked it up. Now you just now you just fucked it up. And now I can't say that during the Super Bowl. Now we're going to lose. Thank you, Jerry. Awesome. Okay. Andy, Blame it on me. It was you me just were, fucking, what did you yeah. tell me last year? Come on. Say the 49ers are going to lose. Say the 49ers. I never said that. Yeah, I said, said, say, the, say, no, say, I said are we going to get the typical we're going to lose shit again. That's what I said to you, dude. No, you said say it. Oh, bullshit. I know what I said, dude. Last year you said say it because it's been working all year. Well, because I was fucking drunk then, I guess. And I, okay. I apologize. You did tell I remember. That. 
I remember telling you just fucking say because you're gonna say it anyway or something like that. We're no, I about. say it doesn't mean I mean it's gonna happen. Well, Andy was gonna say Andy was gonna say if they lost the coin flip, you'd probably start right now. No, that was that was you know City. I put I put that up there for Mark <laughs> Dolly. We're no longer friends, so whatever. But uh, it was a joke between me and him. So Listen, Mark, all right, all right, let's, 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 let's Mark, keep it going. Mark, take it from a Jets fan who expects <laughs> to lose. That's your fault being a Jets situation. fan. Going into everything, you can't joke about that. It's not fair. It's mean. That's what it is. It's just mean. You know what happens if the 49ers lose? I'm upset for a couple hours, and you know what? I go on with my life, dude. That's true. You know what happens when my Jets lose? <laughs> I suffer. And I have been for 47 years. Well, you're just well, at least you guys won a uh, championship. The Browns haven't won shit. <laughs> okay. I'm but we haven't won a championship in I mean, my Super Bowl. fucking lifetime. I mean, Super Bowl. We haven't won yeah, a Super I know, Bowl I know in why my lifetime. The Browns. I've yeah. only, yeah, I've only. Well, seen, also the Chargers haven't won shit either. I've only seen, I've only seen four, four AFC Championship games in my life where my team played, and all four of them were mind-numbingly, excruciatingly painful. <laughs> Was that the in butt every fumble? way? No, oh, the oh, Mark Sanchez yes. never made it to the fucking yeah, championship oh. game. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. Did, did he play? Play? Yes. Mark yeah. Sanchez played in two consecutive yeah. AFC championship games. Yeah. No exactly. fucking way. Are you kidding me? Seriously? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. and they were brutal. Wow. Okay. It was right. so he bad. Made it. Dude, he Mark made Sanchez, it. Mark Sanchez beat Tom Brady in the playoffs at home for the first time in New England history. In yeah, Tom I know Brady's they beat the, Yeah, I know they beat New England one year, but I didn't think it was Sanchez, so. No, Sanchez lost wow. to Pittsburgh, and then they lost to Indianapolis the, the year after. The Jets went All to right. two straight AFC championship games. I stand corrected. Yeah, painful. Well, Sanchez. <laughs> well, that looks good for the Niners, man. Two straight Pain. NFC uh, championship games and then the Super Bowl. I think it's uh -oh. going to be a great game. I think it's going to be great. I I don't have a prediction. I honestly don't. I don't know who's going to win. I'll have it's a prediction a on game. Saturday night. It's it's going to be a good game. You've got the two best teams from the past five years going at it. And so I'm excited for this game. I don't know why people were complaining. Oh, no, this, we don't want this game. But did y'all want Buffalo against Detroit? I mean, no. Yeah. You're watching, you're you watching Patrick Mahomes. You're watching Patrick Mahomes, who's arguably the greatest quarterback we've ever seen. Okay. I mean, he's got to win some more titles, but nobody's ever gone to six straight AFC championship games. Yeah, like that's never happened. Uh, you're talking I mean, about Andy Reid. Who you're talking about Andy Reid, who I believe is the greatest coach to ever play to ever coach the game. I think he's better than Belichick. Um, better than Walsh. Andy, really. I think he's better than Walsh. Everything yeah. Andy Reid is using was taught by Walsh. Yeah, I mean, oh, come God. On. everything Every, always has to yeah, go back to that's a, that's the West Coast yeah. office. They know they okay. wouldn't even name yes. it the Bill Walsh office. Yes, and everything and everything Dream Theater does was derivative of the Beatles and so on and so forth. Every single piece well, that's of true. pop and rock music that has ever come out. In the no, but I'm saying the West actually, Coast offense took over the NFL. Bill Walsh's offense. Actually, yeah, but it, and it's still go with, and it's still going on. By the way, yeah, just a little. He, Andy Reid's done a lot of tweaks to it. He does, but it's yeah, still course. the base offense, though. Dude, that... Go go do yourself a favor. Go watch 1986 49ers versus what the Chiefs do now, and it does not look the same. Okay? It, well, it they tweak doesn't... it a little bit, but it's basically... Not a little it's, bit. It's, a it's called creativity. It's called, it's called taking something that existed before and making it new. But they add it to it. That was I mean, I can, I can honestly say, again, that the Beatles basically did every type of music there was. So yeah. I can honestly say the greatest band of all time is the Beatles, without question. Is it? I don't know. But they started it all. So yeah. every metal band that's so. out right now is derivative of Black Sabbath. Yeah. So should we even bother? You know, I, I don't I just don't like that this is what came before thing because people can do no, but I'm saying they took his his offense revolutionized the NFL. That's all I'm of saying. Of course they did, but that doesn't mean that Andy Reid hasn't achieved more with his tweaks, is the point. Oh, he, that's the point. Yeah. Andy you know, loves Bill. So there you go. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Yeah, yeah. I, of course he does. That's he's oh. influenced by Bill Walsh. I'm sure and, and just that everything always has to go back to either Niners or Dodgers. Mike Holmgren. <laughs> not, not everything goes. The Yankees get a lot of fucking credit in baseball. They, the deserve, they get they're the most winningest franchise in history of sports. Yeah. Of course, have they, have they announced the coach of the year yet? No, I don't know. 
I think your no. coach should win, Andy. I think DeMarco should win. Yeah. Well, no, oh, no, no. I, it, it was it was uh, the guy from the Browns, Stefanski won. Yeah, Stefanski no, could win too. Stefanski, Stefanski won. Yeah, that could be a good one. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, McC- or McCaffrey and Purdy both won. Uh, what? Error, FedEx Ma- error and ground one, ground award, error and ground award. Yeah. Yeah. FedEx, the FedEx award, ground. Right? Whatever that is. I don't oh, know every, what that is. You but... know what, Andy? Everything goes back to what I know. It has nothing very to do little. With okay, moving either. on. <laughs> oh, that's what, what the fuck, man. Well, let's get to the last story. Uh we talked you guys talked about more. I did have a Not dream. Good. I oh, it's only an hour, dude. I had a dream. I told this to Jerry. I don't think it's gonna come true, but I've had two dreams and I never dream my teams win. I had a dream of 49ers won, and then last night I had a dream of 49ers won again, but I had a score with this one. But the thing is, I wasn't able to watch the Super Bowl in my dream. I saw it on my watch, and it told me the score, and I was telling my wife, oh, what shit, I missed, I missed the Super Bowl. 23 what was to, the score? 23 to 8 Niners. Wow. Well, I had a dream. I woke up, I was, you know, going out with Charlize Theron, but that didn't happen. Either well, I just so. figured out it was three touchdowns, a uh, safety. American monster version. <laughs> it was, yeah, the Niners that's what got, I'd get. The Niners got three <laughs> touchdowns and a safety, and the Chiefs got a touchdown and a two-point conversion trying to come back. No. That was just touchdown. my dream. It doesn't mean they're probably going to lose. I love my 49ers. I want them to win, but fucking Mahomes is Mahomes. It's, like you said, one of the best quarterbacks ever. I mean... He's lost the Super Bowl before, so he has. If it was you, need to, you, need, you need to contain him, and you need to hit Kelsey off the line. That's the only way yeah. you're going to stop their offense. Yeah. We if play it was my defense, team playing, dude. I would never say that my team is going to lose. Ever. I didn't say they were going to lose. I said they I mean, might I lose because Mahomes is Mahomes. I don't want I would, them to but, lose. I would say that my team's going to lose because I'm always right. So, <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> all right one one I'll last one last story to end us out because it's something we yeah. talked about. Wolfgang Van Halen, uh, Sammy Hager says he sees uh, a tinge of jealousy in David Lee Roth trash talking Wolfgang Van Halen. Jerry, uh, next please. Okay, so anything to say that on that, Andy? No, no, not really. I really don't. Well, this is David talking trash it with Sammy. I know. Oh, you know. But uh, I guess Chris doesn't have nothing to say about it. So Jerry no, just nothing, left. Nothing surprises me when David Lee Roth goes and fucking spouts off at all. So he talks shit about because like Wolf his King. meal because t- David Lee Roth's meal ticket died when Eddie died. Okay. So of course he's gonna go and, and spout off about um Wolfgang because Wolfgang wants nothing to do with David Lee Roth. So right. So, like, David Lee Roth needs to do something to be relevant because he's not a good singer, he's not a good performer, and he's only famous because of Van Halen. So, there you go. But, again, it goes back to that thing I said about Fleetwood Mac. It's these these old people are just clinging on for dear fucking life to whatever they can to remain relevant, and it just, at the end of the day, makes them look fucking ridiculous so sammy hagar is 100 percent right see at least sammy hagar is like doing other stuff he's got like the tv yeah. show and he's got like a club and he's had other bands and other things that he does david Lee roth like since i don't know his solo career petered out what in the mid 90s yeah For real? early 90s and and then like he had his reunion with van halen which was a major success despite the shit album that they produced oh but, fuck off. but with that being I like said that album Eddie Van Halen dies, and he's like, well, there's no more of that. And Wolfgang wants nothing to do with being his father. So David Lee Roth's going to spout off. Sammy Hagar has made a a side living, almost like a hobby, trolling David Lee Roth and just fucking shitting on him at every every turn. (laughs) And David Lee Roth makes it easy. Like, David Lee Roth just makes it easy to shit on him. So have at it. So, yeah, he's right. David Lee Roth is jealous of... Well, anybody. He's jealous of anybody who has a career right now, let's just say that. Well, because David craves the spotlight. Yeah. Which so Wolf Gang is going out years. on his own and being successful at it. Really good at it, too, man. Yeah. But, uh, Jerry, man, it's time for your part of the show, man. You're doing the list. You're starting us off. What are we doing, man? We are doing... I'm going to let Chris introduce this one because it's his pick. I'll do the order, but I'm going to let Chris introduce this. Oh, yeah, introduce so cupid flew over my house the other day and decided to to swing in and have a a few drinks with me and we chatted and 
uh, Valentine's Day is next week, and I don't know. I felt I felt in the loving mood, and uh, I listened to a lot of hair metal, and I went to see Mr. Big this week, and so I'm I'm all in the middle of of that. So I decided power ballads was the way to go. So we are doing the top eleven power ballads of our specific all time for yes. us, for each one of us. So that's because we're all we're metalheads, we're all heavy rockers, but man, we love the we love our ladies and uh oh, dude, I love we the like ballads, the romance. So, love uh, the yeah. If you grew up with hair metal, you know that track number four was the fucking ballad, baby. That's what it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> track number four. Go look. Yeah. Every almost every fucking album, track number four. Yeah, ballad. the first the first single was usually the second song, and then the ballad was the fourth song. Yeah. I, I think I might have a lot of dark ballads on here. That's not, not all lovey love dovey. Yeah. No, they're not all love they're songs. Not all but, love songs. But I just yeah. no, but I just figured that um I didn't want to pick love songs because that is like I could have said love power ballads, but that's very specific. Um, I didn't want to do love songs because then you're I don't know, that opens it up to everything. Power to ballads anything, is very specific yeah. to like rock yeah. or at least pop rock. Um, it doesn't venture that far out from there. So there we are. All right. Power Andy, power Andy, why don't you start us off, man? All right. Um, I started my list in a certain genre in a certain decade. Um, I know that in the earlier in the week it was opened up, but I had already done my list. So number eleven is a title track. I got props, so I'm excited. Uh, I didn't get my props. The title out. track to Hysteria. Hysteria. One of the better songs on on this album. This album hasn't really aged well for me, um, but the song Hysteria still sticks out to me as being um, a great track. So that's what I'm going to start off with is um, Hysteria. Bro, is that an OG Hysteria? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My God. Yeah. Do you know how much that goes for? <laughs> um, no, I don't. I mean, you could get a cool hundy for that at least. I don't know what any Especially of these... if it's in good shape. It looks like it's in really good shape. So, oh yeah, it is. But I don't know what any of this is worth. As a vinyl dealer, I can tell you that I have seen that go for between a hundred and one hundred and fifty bucks. So, no, I'm cool. There you go. No, I'm just <laughs> I'm saying. Sure. I'm just telling you. I'm pretty you sure my hard... wife will be in a lot of green when I die. But I say, for if, you're, now, if you're hard up for cash, it. if you're hard up for cash, there you go. All right, Chris, man. Number 11, ready? All right, much to Mark's chagrin, I'm going to start this list off with a kiss song. And of course uh, you. I was caught between two songs. One of the like, pro I was I was gonna go with the OG power ballad and I Still Love You from Creatures of the Night. But upon further review, I think my favorite Kiss ballad is Reason to Live from Crazy Nights. I think that's my favorite one as a whole. Um, again, we were talking, you were just talking about Hysteria, an album that didn't age well. I love Hysteria, I love everything on there. Uh, this song did not age well, but it's one of Paul Stanley's best, like performances i love the melody line it's just a great song reason to live from crazy nights good all right mark all right man i I'm when i saw hysteria the first song that always comes into my head is gods of war fucking love that song yeah. the harmonies and shit but my number 11 I, i'm going with a it's not really like a love ballad ballad but it's a, it's a great fucking like american fucking singer rocker fucking bob seeger against the wind Oh, I actually love that song. That's one of my favorite songs by him. My I favorite fucking Bob love song. that fucking song. That is a fucking got, killer power ballad, man. I love it. I remember my uh, my uncle gave that to my mom uh, when that album came out, and I heard it so much, and I loved that album so much that when I moved from my mom's house, I, I took it. I still have it with me. Because <laughs> my mom wasn't a, is not a big music person. So I got more out of it, so I took it. She knows I have it. Nice. All right. I guess I'll do my pick now. And I'm with you, Mark, on the Bob Seeger, but I'm gonna go to the Stranger in Town in Town album and get We've Got Tonight. Oh, that's a great one too. Yeah. I think that's a great love song. Uh, it's uh was it Kenny Rogers and Sheena Easton that redid yeah, that one yeah. in the eighties? Yep. yep, they did. Um but what a beautiful song that is. The lyrics are amazing. Bob Seger fucking rules, dude. He's one of the best of all time. We did a one. We did a freeform show on Bob Seger live album. It was just man, that album we reviewed was just nine man. tonight, it right? Was, 
Yeah, just freaking awesome. Yeah. And then, um, so anyway, that's my number 11. Uh, let's go with your number 10, Andy. You know, just to talk about Bob Seger real quickly, I go to this record store that when I buy an album, you can look through used bin for free. And I was going through it and do. I've been looking for this one for the longest time. It did not have the cover. It just had the paper to it. But, man, it was clean. It was Bob Seger 7. Mm -hmm. I was been looking for that one because I got Mongrel and I got all the others. I just don't have 7, so I found it. It just doesn't mm -hmm. have the cover, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. So my number 10 is going to be off a band that, that um y'all like. I think y'all like them, but um they're okay with me. The from the debut album of Skid Row, I Remember You. I love mm -hmm. that song. I think um Sebastian Bach had some really good pipes. I did um I do like their second album, Slave to the Grind. I got that one on cassette and I spend that quite a bit. I mm -hmm. used to have their debut OG on vinyl, but I gave it to a friend of mine that I knew would, would enjoy it more than I would. I, so, I got the first one and Slave to the Grind yeah. on vinyl, and I got the record store version of Slave to the Grind, where it has uh the, they had a song where they replaced Get the Fuck Out with it has both of them on there and a Beggar's couple live tracks. Yeah. Huh. Beggar's, Beggar's Day. Day. Yeah, it has both of them on the same vinyl. Fucking cool as fuck. But, and that's yes. OG? Well, no, it's a record store record day version. Day. It just came out. Oh, okay. That's cool. They added well, both anyway, of them. Anyway, Chris, you missed Mark picked uh, Against the Wind by Bob Seger. And I picked We've Got and I got we've I picked We've Got Tonight by Bob Seger. We got and, tonight. Um, and then Andy picked. I That's why we're co-hosts, so man. We got a hive mind. Sometimes. Who needs tomorrow? <laughs> right, Jerry? <laughs> we got tonight, baby. Except why for, don't you stay? Except for and Slayer, man. Slayer. I heard the debut for, I mean, I heard the duet by uh, Rogers and Easton first, of course, because it was all mm. over the radio when I was a kid. So when I got older and I heard the original first, I was like, oh, my God. Fuck about Bob Seger is awesome. Because yeah. Seger kicks their ass easily. Yeah. It's funny. I'm not like a fan of Bob Seger, but like I love every song I think I've ever heard from. Bob <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah I'm <laughs> you got to get the live for, albums. Live except, Bullet Nine Tonight, man. That's except all for, you need. Except for Shake Down. I love that song. I dude. love that song. You're yeah, busted. Beverly Hills Cop <laughs> Two, man. You oh, it, it, it just makes me want to do this all day. Hey, man, Jerry, what has it got? It's got a groove. <laughs> all right okay yeah anyway anyway chris let's go for your number 10 fucking man. awful anyway um next one is arguably one of the sickest voices in definitely the hair metal era but probably in rock in general and it's a shame that this band didn't make it further and he's more famous for being um mark Wahlberg's voice in rock star oh, yeah. <laughs> than he is for his band Steelheart. And the oh, song man, what a by, voice. But the song I'm going to pick by Steelheart is She's Gone. Oh, that one. Okay. That's a good my one. My fucking God. The yeah. the vocal performance on that song. Yeah. I need to the, check out that band, man. And just the Seriously. sheer dramatic, like it's so dramatic. Like the song is so big and epic and dramatic. It's just such a really good song. It's it's tremendous. It's on the first album. I've been hearing uh, a lot of people talk about Steelheart lately. I need to check them out. I've never really heard them. Yeah, I thought, yeah I, thought you, I thought you were going to say I'm uh, when I'm with you. That's the song I was. Uh, no, oh, no, what's it called? Uh, I'll never let you go. Never let you go. That's it. Yeah, yeah, no, I can't listen to that song ever again because it's just too much. I, I've heard it too many times. It was like the one you. hit that they had. If I was going to listen to Steelheart, Mark, I would definitely go with the first two albums. Um, all the songs. Have you seen the movie Rockstar? Yeah, I have. I own so all it. the songs in there are Steelheart. Yeah. So if you like that, those songs, then you'll probably that like big it. song in there that they sang was, was written by uh, Sammy Hagar. <laughs> well, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. I mean, they have yeah. they have a cover too. But yeah, all right. Your number ten, Mark. My number ten is uh, number Andy. So come, Andy was next. Uh, Andy's next. You jump it's around or number nine? Yeah. Number, no, number 10. I, I didn't do number my number 10. ten yet. Me and you didn't do no Andy did number ten already. He did uh he does number ten. Oh, um, I didn't do my number ten. My turn. Right. Yeah. I remember you. Oh, yeah, I, lo I lost order. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well it's Mark's turn. Well, I'm gonna I'm go, still sober. I'm gonna go from the Vital Signs <laughs> album with fucking a great singer named Jimmy Jamerson. Fucking one of the best voices, I think, for rock and rock and ballads, Burning Heart. Fucking we were talking about Rocky earlier. Fucking great Burning fucking soundtracks on. But uh fucking you know, complete intoxication. I'm high on you. Fucking love that song. Fucking good song. 
High the whole energy. album is good. Vital signs. Oh yeah. fuck yeah! Even the the newer version, they got uh the the moment of truth from the Karate Kid soundtrack on there, the expanded version. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. You know, Mark, I don't know what's up with me and you, but I also have Survivor as my number ten. <laughs> but I have the search is over. Actually, I mean same that's album. <laughs> same <laughs> album. Wow, yeah. these guys have I been mean, working too much together. Yeah, we got a hive mind Such right now. Over. <laughs> Love was with me hey, all the And good luck finally struck like lightning from, from, from the moon. Every okay, gentlemen. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. We, well, we always about, have to have a listen, karaoke listen, session. Listen, listen, all we right. Talk, no, no, no. We we talk about the music <laughs> because we suck at the music. Okay, so hey, that's, well, that's why we're we, talking about it. Yeah, that's right. We are <laughs> sideline people. But okay? it's part I'm of the an, comedy. I, we do karaoke. Bad karaoke. I'm an accomplished. I'm an accomplished singer and. I don't want to hear any of this. <laughs> hey, it's called right, karaoke. Us, let's hear your number nine then, man. Andy. Who, me? Yep. Yeah, uh, my, my number nine is going to be... I got the 45 to this, actually. Al Smith's Angel. Oh, love it, dude. That's yeah, a good it's one. a really great song. Yeah. Um, this is off the, um, of course, the Permanent Vacation um, album. From, How old do you think the, the girl English. is he's talking about in that song? You think she's 14? <laughs> right. <laughs> is that Desmond Shout or Diane Warren song? Yeah, no, uh, it's uh, Bruce Fairburn. Oh, okay. So, I thought it was one of those two. Yeah. No, oh, that's a great album, man. I love that yeah. whole album. Yeah, it's it's really good. Cool. Cool. Hangman Jury is like one of the best songs ever by them. I can love that song. It's, really it's a really strong album. Yeah. yeah. Are you done, Andy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, Chris, number nine, man. So I was torn between two songs on this one. Um, it's by the aforementioned Van Halen. And I couldn't... I, I, I'm i just going to mention them both. Uh, I love the... The, the, the difference is, is that... I'm just going to go with Love Walks In. That's going to be the one from 5150. Great one. Love Walks In is just a great fucking song. It's really, really good. I, I actually like the lyrics to it. Um, it's very meaningful to me in my life. Um, I was going to pick you. When It's Love, but the problem with When It's Love is that I like the live version significantly better. Uh, yeah. And so I'm just going to go with straight studio track. Love Walks In, 5150. Um, excellent keyboard part. Great vocal. Um, it's got. It's even got a little bit of an Alex Van Halen drum bit at the end, which is pretty cool, like in a ballad, which is unusual. Uh, it's got the signature Michael Anthony backing vocals. It's just a great song. It's a good song. It has Nanas too. So, mm. <laughs> some kind <laughs> of alien. Okay. Sorry. Oh, no, it's one. It's love. I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Yeah, one. It's love. love, has love, love yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I was singing the song he picked. So there you go. Anyway, Mark, are you done, Chris? Yep. All right, Mark. Number You'll nine. Know. It better, not, you know. better not be the same band. You know when I'm done. I don't know because you <laughs> love this band. We both love this band, and we're going to do a review on them on Saturday. So, ah, uh, shit. Nelson. No, Sticks. Love in the Moonlight. Well, that's a wow. That's Equinox. That's a, no, that's uh, that's no. Tommy Shaw, dude. That's Cornerstone. 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 Yeah, love okay. in the Moonlight. Fucking the, that bass what am line. I thinking of on Equinox? Oh, Midnight off, Ride is what I'm off, thinking of on Equinox. First off, it's called Love in the, Love in the Midnight. Not Love in the Midnight, yeah. Love That's what was head. confusing, yeah. My bad. Love in the Midnight. My bad. All right, I'll just write it down real quick at work. Hold on tight, I'm a man. It's a good song. It's fucking yeah. good. That's a great song. I, I was worried you might say first time. I don't know time. if, I, I, don't like, know if uh, I consider that a power ballad, but it's fucking, it's a dope song anyway. Yeah. Oh, he's talking about making love in the midnight. Come on, man. That's a love power ballad. Usually it would be a little slower, but I, I'll let it slide. I'm not. That's I'm a not, power <laughs> power ballad, man. There you go. No, power <laughs> ballad. No. So just just for those who don't know, because uh, oh. I had to look this up a few years ago. A power ballad actually refers more to the vocal delivery and the fact that the song is a little harder. So, like, in other words, there is a ballad. The, the idea of a ballad is a story, period, right? It's just a yeah. story. Yeah. So, like, Piano Man is a ballad of sorts, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. But the difference between, like, Piano Man and, let's say, like, She's Gone or Love Walks In by Van Halen is that it's harder, it's heavier, and it's more dramatic. The vocalization is more dramatic. So, like, I have a song on my list, which I had to go back and forth on and go, I'm not sure if it's actually a power ballad or just a ballad. So, 
and we'll get to that when we get to it. So, but anyway, just so you know, but I'm not shitting on your, on your, on your, I, I like the song. Uh, there's I like a, that it's there's mentioned. a story in that song and there's yeah. vocals is vocals. I mean, babe, babe is more of the power ballad on that album, but it's even not even close. It's kind of borderline power ballad. Babe is a okay. borderline. Yeah. So. Babe, I'm leaving. <laughs> now Angie's Let's doing it. We've all, we are all now officially sung on this stream. There you go. <laughs> right on. All right. Wait, so it's up I to me. We've been doing that a lot lately. It's karaoke. We always do bad karaoke on here. Yeah. Come on. It's part of the show. Get with I love it. it. My, my number nine is like the quintessential power ballad. It really is. It was on all those compilations. I'm not gonna even try to attempt to sing the fucking chorus because the guy had a great voice. Oh, can I guess? Is it the what? band Sheriff? <laughs> when I'm with you, there you go. <laughs> oh, no. I win! Absolutely. I win the lottery. Oh, it's fucking great. That's it. I mean, once you say, it, I, I, it's a quintessential power ballad, man. It really is, dude. I mean, and it's like the only song that band ever did. <laughs> exactly. Well, I knew he was in that band, Alias, the singer. And he had a couple of hits, I think, with with Alias. But uh, <laughs> I fucking loved it. I yeah, guess. that's that's funny because I mean, what I mean, the guy can fucking wail. Don't get me wrong, but man, I, to me, that's like the ultimate love power ballad, man. So that's my number nine. And uh, let's go with uh, your number eight, Andy. Uh, my number eight. Oh, um, I didn't pull it out, but 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 it is back here. Um, I forgot to pull it because I didn't have that much time. But I believe Mark saw them about a week or two ago, I think. Who did you Night see Ranger. the last week? Night Mark? Ranger? Sister Christian yeah. is my number eight. Well, I got a Night Ranger song, but not that one. Yeah. And that's my favorite song by um, Night Ranger. It's a great they end, track. They end, the, they end their shows with that song. Really? Yeah. That's wacky. No, that's they, wacky they go out really hard with it. Though, does Kelly song. still over sing that song? Dude. There's points in that, like we're talking about old singers, like Kelly will hit that. You go, Motorhead. He'll hit that fucking note and then he'll crack in a simple note. So you, you hear it back and forth. Jack was doing the same thing. It was fucking cool. Oh, dude, he, they're he, old, man. They're old. But I know, but it was good because all of them sing they were doing background. It together. All yeah, of them yeah. sing together. So that's awesome. So yeah, that's my number eight, Sister Christian. Yeah. All right, Chris, number eight, man. My number eight is by a band that. Probably most people don't know, but they should. It's a band called Lillian X. I know Lillian heard of them. From their first album, a song called Nobody Knows, which is one of my favorite ballads of all time. It's, such a, it's just a it's a really great love song. And it, it really just speaks to, um, you know, partners just knowing each other more than anybody else. And, you know, the, the main hook is nobody knows when you're down and out. So, um but I know, you know what I mean? Like, and, and that's, you know, so it's, it's really meaningful and it's very, it's very poignant and it's just incredibly well sung. I love Ron Taylor's voice so much. Stevie blaze has an excellent solo on the song. If you haven't heard Lillian acts, I'm going to sing the gospel of this goddamn band forever and ever. They're going on tour. I think this year, this year, Oh wow! Who are, I'm trying to see them March 30th in New York city. Who are they playing with Alcatraz? I think they're playing with Alcatraz. The fake so, Alcatraz. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I don't care about them. I want to see a Lillian X. So, <laughs> all right, Mark. Oops, oh, sorry. Go for it, Mark. Number eight. Mine, number eight. Uh, I know Chris will be know this song. I don't, maybe it is a power ballad. It's like half power ballad and half rocker. Uh, the Bitter Pill by Warrant. Oh, you fucking whore. That's one of mine. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> That's a great song. It's a that's that's tremendous. what I said. I think you know this fucking song, fucking killer, and then the fucking wah wah, and then it goes boom, 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 and it's just, I mean, it's just now, the now. song. Just the song just shows the brilliance of Jenny Lane's writing. Honestly, it's yeah. just it, it's a wonderful song. So yeah, so that's my number eight. It's from the Doggy Dog album. Doggy so. Dog album. My number eight is my actually favorite song from this band. I don't know if you'd call it a power ballad, but it's definitely a slow tempoed song. Temp, uh, tempoed song. Um, I took a walk down the road. It's the road I was meant to stay. Come on, what is Monday? it? No. <laughs> Coming home by Cinderella. I was just you know, about to fucking get it. Damn. 
I, I love that fucking song. Am I tough song enough him. for your love? Yeah, I would call that a ballad. It's slow enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's close to being too fast, but yeah, that's that's good enough. But that's your favorite. Mark's got, Mark's got the swamp ass. I can tell by the way he's. Yeah, no, it, it, I got a cramp in my. In you need to get yourself a. Oh look, I got a camp. Yeah. I got a cramp in the quad. Right All right, dude, you need to go and get some dude wipes, man. He's got the. No, it's a cramp. Ass. Damn it, it's a cramp. That's why he doesn't sit in that leather chair. Otherwise, he would have the swamp ass. I was I was in cold water. It was cold water. Yeah, I, I, I mean, and again, cliche would be to pick. Don't know what you got till it's gone. But I I, I love it's my favorite song. But I always love I, that song. It's just I, I love I love like the way. That. I love the fucking nobody's way. fool, dude. Yeah, nobody's fool's the better. Nobody's fool's the coming home's a great song. I like coming home though. I think it's a great song. Coming home's a great song too. But nobody's uh, I, fool, dude. Yeah, don't Whoa. don't know what you got is I, I think that's an overhyped song. I'm not a fan. Not a fan of that song. Well, since y'all ruined that for me, we'll go to Andy's number seven. I'm sorry. <laughs> we all said it was a good song. But come yeah, on, no, I like home. no, I like coming home. I think it's a good pick. I do too. Um, <laughs> uh, my uh, my number seven is going to be off one of the first albums that really got me into rock when I was a kid. And I bought this when it came out. I'm talking about Slippery When Wet by nice. Bon Jovi. Um, the name of the song, the one that I'm going to go with because there's a couple on here, but Never Say Goodbye. I love that song. That was Always my have. Song. That was my prom really song. Good song. So, um, but also, you know, I could have gone uh, with uh, Without Love or I Die For You or even Living On A Prayer. But yeah. no, Never Say Goodbye. Mm-hmm. The All right, Chris. Ballad on there. Number seven, Chris. Oh, we went through, we went through Mark's eight. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so my number seven, I just saw Mr. Big this week. Um, yeah. They played the uh, the entirety of the Lean Into It album when I saw them, and this song was on there. Just take my heart. Oh, it's it a great one. Um, that was in my I mentions. I know the traditional pick would have been uh, to be with you. Um, yeah. I got like Mr. Big's one of the masters of. of the ballad, honestly, with Eric Martin's voice, I, they've had so many great ones. Uh, Nothing but love and uh, big love and anything for you and ain't seen love like that. I could have picked from a pantheon oh, of yeah. ballads, but I just went just take my heart because I just saw it live and it was just so very good, very stirring, very even, even their rendition. version of Wild World is pretty good. Yeah, I love it. I love that yeah. song. Ooh, I love the way. That, I mean, I love everything Mr. Bo- Mr. Big does. So yeah. I'm actually going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to be doing a fandom files on Mr. Big soon, and uh, I'm actually going to do a, uh, a uh, just a short form video, like not a minute, but it's going to be like shorter. But um, it's going to be about what's up with Richie Cotton and why why is he like the calling card for the death of a band. <laughs> so. <laughs> But anyway, poison, Mister Big. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> All right, Mark. Oh, now Number... this 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 is totally a traditional ballad. And if you guys know me, I you know how much I love this singer, one of my favorite singers of all time, Mister Lou Graham. You, you can't have a fucking power ballad list without Foreigner. God damn! If you don't, if none of you guys have a Foreigner, I'm gonna well, I don't. Andy might. You don't. I do. Well, I wait, don't. Waiting for a I girl like about it. waiting for a girl like you. Oh, that, that sounds like never ending. Ugh. I love that song. I, love, I mean, I I love the song, but yeah, it does go on for a while. <laughs> Too long. I th- what I tried to do is I try when I made this list, I tried to stay away from the very obvious ones. Um, bands. Well, are obvious, I got to put Luke Grant. Luke Grant's one of my all time singers. He's got to go not, on here. I don't have a journey song on here. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but it's not one. That, it's not one that you think though. Might be one I like though. <laughs> All right, so I guess it's my number seven A. Um, yeah. A. Of course, you know I'm a huge Boston fan, so I got to have a Boston song on here. Of course, I'm gonna go with the Third Stage album, and it's not Amanda. It's Can't oh. You Say You Believe in Me. That's the best one on there. I agree. Brad's voice is fucking incredible on that tune. Um, a lot of people shit on that album, dude, but I think it's equally as good as their first two, man. Um, that album is a sonic fucking gem. It really is. And Brad Delt, man. Put that man, on I a s- good stereo system. Oh, I still God. mourn that guy's death, man. He's one of my favorite singers, man. It's fucking, it's just tragic. But uh, I love that song. And um, R.I.P. Brad, you're fucking awesome, dude. 
I mean, All right, it, no. might, it might be produced really well, but I think you're both high if you think that album's as good as Don't Look Back or the first album. Well, it isn't. It's a good <laughs> album, no. I'm drunk, but I'm not high. So maybe that's <laughs> it's it. A good, it's a good album. Um, but <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> it's not a terrible not a terrible album. I'm just saying. But it's, it's no, nowhere it's, near the first that, two. Yeah, that, that oh, album man. doesn't sniff the Jerry jock of the first two. Jerry didn't say that. He says this album gets a lot of shit. No, he said it's every bit as good as the first. I, album. Oh, you I, did? I, I, said, I did say that. Oh, I you're, you're, I still mean Jerry, it, so. Jerry, I can't. Def- didn't, I can't defend you on that one, dude. I say, if come on, come on. That, cool the engines. If he, can't you say, say that, Holly would, Ann? It's a great Holly album. Fucking Ann. But you got great smoking. Tunes. You got fucking yeah, long. Yeah, they're all equally the same. No, they're every not. So, every song on that first album is a fucking banger. It every is. Song on the first Absolutely. Album. And, then, and then the second album is almost as good as the first. Like, yes. And so was the and so was, and so was third stage. Every no. song is the same. Holly Ann, Holly Ann is kind of weak. Fucking Holly Ann rules. I knew you were gonna say Amanda that. Amanda is weak. That song sucks. Amanda is the weakest song on. That's the weakest song on Aww. the album. I fucking hate that song. Everyone, when I was a kid, I made up. Amanda's like, awesome lyrics. though. No, I made up I'm lyrics. Gonna like, take I'm gonna take you by surprise. I'm gonna kick you I'm in the ball. All right. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna trigger Chris. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trigger Chris here. Slayer you fucking can't. wipes their Slayer you wipes can't. their fucking feet on Mr. Big. There you go. <laughs> anyway. I mean, they might actually, because other than Billy Sheen, they're all not really tough looking at all. So it's possible. Yeah, but Paul Gilbert could play out. All right. Out again, 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 you are all wrong and I am right. But anyway, Andy, you're all right, Master. Sense, all right, Master Jerry. <laughs> That's There's true. Your Paul Gilbert does shred Master. all those fuckers. Just for right. Paul Gilbert and Billy Sheen are, have more yep. ability in their yep. fucking left yep. thumb than either yep. one of them. Yeah, in yep. the back of the, in the locker room with the gym, too, I'm sure. But anyway, uh, go ahead. What? I have a suggestion oh. for you. I have a suggestion for you, Jerry. Oh, boy. I can't I'm wait to hear triggered. this one. I, I'm not triggered. But if you think Paul Gilbert is not that good, go listen to Racer dude, X. Dude, of course he's a fucking master, dude. <laughs> go listen to Racer X. I'm, I mean, even like... If I he like... Does, dude. I, if he no, does pussy like Mr. Mr. Big music. No, but even, dude. If, 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 even those people... No, no, listen. Even if those people who say, like, he does pussy Mr. Big music. I'm like, okay, go listen to Racer X. You'll be fine. <laughs> no, I like Mr. Big. I was just doing it to fuck with you. I know you are. But, uh, I know you anyway, are. Anyway... I'm telling it for the audience too. Racer right. X. That's where the right, metal Andy. is. Number six, brother. My number six is the leadoff track off a of third stage. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my number six. Wait, um... wait, wait, wait. Thank Standing you. Ovation. Standing um, ovation. Standing ovation. I really didn't want to hit um, the same band twice, but I did because I couldn't get off of this song because I really like it a lot. It's off of Pyromania. I'm talking about Foolin'. Wow, great tune. The, the Damn Foolin. it. I, I, I can't shit on that one. Damn it. <laughs> too Late for Love song. is a great one, too. Yeah, That's the one I thought it was going to pick. That's the one I, I thought really it was going to pick. Much, I pretty much stayed on um hits and well-known oh, tracks, okay. as y'all can see. But yeah, that's my number six is Foolin'. Good pick, dude. All right, Chris, man, number six. Too, man. Bringing on the heartbreak is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do, yeah, they do really good ballad. Photograph. Um, we're up to my number it's six. An anthem and themic. Uh, my number six, uh, we got a little Neil Sean loves Neil All Sean, right. baby. Oh, oh, oh. Can't Find My Way by Hardline is oh. such a fucking phenomenal song. Oh. And... Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. It's a really good song. Really, really good, like, love song. Slow. Really hammer a chick to it. It's good. <laughs> it's good stuff. I- I'm surprised Jerry hasn't picked a keel ballad yet. Keel. Oh, it's coming. I got three of them coming up, actually. <laughs> you know, he, he, did, he did start off keel fest with ballads, so that's why. <laughs> you okay. don't hear keel very often, so. Uh... Who? And, and like I said, I always like I like old eighties feel, but I, I, they were they were good. But, Somebody's yeah, waiting right. is such a fucking great song. Yeah, it is. All right, yeah, Mark. Hard oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. You done? Oh, you're. I'm done. That's it. There was nothing right, more to right. say. Really, great vocal performance. Good song. It's just a good song. Well, oh, right, of course, I need to pick one of my favorite bands that I'm going to see on the 24th of this month. Uh, Extreme. But it's not the ones you think I'm going to pick from Extreme because it's from their new album and it was a single and a video. So, uh, Other Side of the Rainbow. I fucking love the harmonies song. on that fucking song. Never heard it. 
babe, I'm gonna up, get to the other side of the and when, just, when I saw them they played it live and it was so good. It was the harmonies good. that him and Nuno are doing. Oh my god, it's just so fucking good. And I fucking I love that fucking whole album, even the Jamaican shit they do. Fucking yeah. really cool because Extreme is like Queen. They fucking mix it up. They just don't stay into one genre. And I fucking love the band for that. So other side of the rainbow from their last album, six. But I do love other, more than words. Such a good song. Great song. Yeah. It's a great the song. Other, but the other ballad, the other ballad on that album's really good too. Uh Small Town uh, Beautiful. Yeah, Small Town Beautiful. That's great a great song. one too. I almost picked that one. Yeah. 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 Good song. Good good pick, man. That's a good one. Yeah. I wasn't expecting anything current. That's that's a good pick. Well, that song's All been right. stuck in my head for for months, dude. So <laughs> my number six is going to surprise you, Mark. I think it really will. But I am going to pick, and it's one of the most beautiful ballads I have ever heard from the from the from a movie soundtrack by Phil Collins. Against all odds, good one. Wow. Oh. Man, what a fucking vocal performance that song that fucking Phil oh, does on that song, dude. Amazing song. Shitty movie, terrible movie, but man, yeah, what's what a, a good great... movie. J- Jeff wow. Bridges and fucking yeah, was what's his name good. and what's her name? Jeff Bridges and the other guy that he had gay sex with during that movie. Yeah. Did he? No, I don't know. Oh, James Woods. <laughs> it was James Woods. Uh and uh, I thought it was James Brolin. No, it was James Woods. Was it James Woods? Uh, Jeff, oh, okay. James Woods, uh oh, Jeff well, Bridges. Was terrible. And the girl who played in the Thornbirds, that actress. Rachel Ward. Rachel Ward, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the I movie like kind that of movie. But anyway, that fucking song is just a fucking vocal performance. If, I don't know if Phil won a Grammy for that, but he should have. An amazing he vocal performance. Not. That's my number six. Dude, he or played Andy. it at Live Aid on both continents. Just put it that way, man. He could have also gotten an Oscar for that, too, but he yeah. didn't. True, yeah. All right, Andy, number five, man. A really good song. That's one of my didn't favorites. Didn't he get an Oscar for I that like horrible it. Tarzan soundtrack? Yes. Oh, God, Dude. that Tarzan. Oh, my, oh my God. God. What a fucking great album that is. Are you kidding me? The only oh, album I hate by Phil Collins. Oh, oh my God. Fuck that's what you'll be in my heart, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah one of my, in my, heart. One oh my God, favorite God. memes. One of my favorite memes of all time is the one with the guy sitting at the flaming piano. It's like on fire. And it goes, Disney comes to Phil Collins and says, hey, just write us an album and it's just fire. Like that fucking album kills. I don't care what anybody says. The Tarzan soundtrack is dope. That's good I shit. just hate you be in my heart. It's just too sappy. Oh, such a good song. Sappy. Do you have any children, Mark? Uh, I like his sappy yeah, that songs. Explains it. That explains it. Yeah. <laughs> I love everything Phil Collins has done with Genesis and Solo. I just don't like that. That explains it. <laughs> Shut up. All right, Andy, number five, man. Yeah, my, uh, my number five, I ran out of time of finding the CD because I was looking in the wrong case. But yeah. I'm still going to keep it. Number five by Poison, Something to Believe in. Nice one. Love that one song. The, one of the only Poison songs I like. That's a good pick. Oh, That's I like Poison of- got deep. Well, the only time they got deep. Poison got deep. They're like deep like a puddle. Christ. Hey, <laughs> I like them with CC better than Richie. I do like that album, Native Tongue, but I want my fun, like, you don't think about the lyrics shit. Now they're making me think. Oh, oh Brett or Ricky like it better without Richie, too. Who, who was the one he was sleeping, wife sleeping with? Was Ricky it Ricky's Hawk. or Brett's? Rocket. It was Ricky's, yeah. <laughs> I wish we had Vince Cabin yeah. on here. He could tell you that that was bullshit. He told me the story, uh, so it's pretty cool. I wish Poison oh. wasn't so lauded as the hair metal band because I'm sorry, like fucking Warrant, yeah. Rat, fucking all those bands bury Poison. It's I like love them all band. though. Yeah, but you didn't want to, you know, do, you know, you want to have sex with Warrant when you saw their album cover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wasn't a big Warrant fan at all. I just oh, JD Lane rules, dude. The, eh, I, don't yeah. know about it. I learned, I learned, I learned to appreciate him later on. I almost, I almost great, picked great heaven. Singer. You know, I got a picture of your house. You stand yeah, we know the by song. the door. Sometimes she cries. Sometimes black she cries and fine, song, in my opinion, but, um, He's telling stories. You like singer songwriters? I do. He's like, I do. But I just thought they were generic to me. Uh, have well, you li- read, read the lyrics and mean? listen oh. to the songs? So anyway, Andy, you don't have, you don't have to, Andy. 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 Oh, thank Andy. you, Jerry. Andy, if you, if, you give, if you want to give Warren another try, and I implore you to do so, and you know that I have good taste. We've had this this conversation. <laughs> I would listen to Dog Eat Dog. Yes. The album Dog Eat Dog. 
or the album Belly to Belly or Ultraphobic. Those are all those, good. Those last three albums with Janie Lane are far better than Cherry Pie and, and the like the first two albums that you were saying are probably generic because they kind of are. They were trying to fit in a box, especially yeah, the first Yeah, I got those two albums on cassette, the, yeah. the Dirty, Filthy, Rich, and um, yeah. Cherry Pie. I've I mean, got those. I like, I like Cherry Pie nice as a whole. I like the album Cherry Pie as a whole. Yeah. I think it's really, really, really good. But Doggy Dog is like a whole nother yeah, level. Yeah, it it's is. Way different. They just, it, it's, it, I would, I would implore you to give it another shot. I think you'll be surprised. Michael Wagner produced it too, man. Yeah, that's, a, that's what I would say. But I mean, you know, not everybody's going to love everything. But Michael like, Wagner, yeah, one of the best for the second album. You know, you got to admit that when it was going, like Doggy Dog came out in what, like the early 90s? Yeah. I was in a whole different world in the early nineties. Well, check it out now. You're not a different world. Now you can All right, check so it out. That's, I would... uh, poison something to believe in. That was your, is that what you done, Andy yeah, talking about? Yeah, that? yeah. Anyway, go ahead guys. I'm sorry. I didn't mean if you guys want to talk. Flesh ahead. and blood, no, no, I believe. I was, I just wanted to, I wanted to lead Andy down the yeah. primrose path. I just okay. <laughs> wanted to bring him to the right place. All right, Chris, what's your number five, man? My number five, sticking with the Neil Sean vibe. All right. I got from the Frontiers album, Journey, Send Her My Love. Good one. One of my uh, all-time favorite songs. Um, really? One of the most interesting things about that song is that- I like Faithfully better. Steve Smith's drum part on that song is so different. It's just different. And uh, Steve Perry's vocal performance on Send Her My Love is one of my favorites. I just, I love the really? song so much. Yeah. Wow. That's one of those songs that I'm just like, holy, when is this going to stop? Yeah, really? Center My Love, Center My Love, and Who's Crying Now um, weren't two of my favorites. But they're all right. I mean, yeah, they're okay, know. but it just... I don't. I don't love the seventeen minute version of Who's Crying Now, but the regular version's fine. <laughs> yeah, they're okay, but they're they're not. I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess so. I guess it is a really good song. Come to think about it, no, nah, never it, for me. So Lamar Jackson <laughs> was named the MV, MVP of the NFL. And I'm not surprised by and that. And Flacco That's... was the comeback player of the year. Really, Flacco? Yeah. Flacco, yeah. comeback player. Uh, well, who would it be? Who would you pick over Flacco? I have to think about it. There were a couple of my I, I picked, on the show uh, that Jared I, I Goff forget. for comeback player. Of the year. He was good yeah. last year. Yeah, but he I want to give it to someone who played five games. Yeah, I don't know. He made a huge impact. He brought the team to the playoffs. He was their fourth string quarterback. Yeah, and he was he was sitting on the couch watching football with his kids. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but still. Kid, I would you give it to write someone a story. who played all year. I mean, I guess. I guess that's fair. But, you know. If his quarterback I mean, doesn't get rookie of the year, I'm going to be shocked. Uh, oh, God. Andy's. Yeah, I can't I mean, it, it's not really a come, uh, oh, well, no, comeback player of the year, but I'd have to give it to Baker, man. I know it's not Baker really Mayfield, a comeback yeah. player of the year. But, but he played all year last year. Yeah, Baker. but still, I he wasn't that great. I can't see a comeback player being someone who played all year last year. Well, so did I would Chris. say so maybe Cooper Cup. Well, Flacco was your backup, right? Flacco was your backup, right? He wasn't your starter. No, Flacco right? was the starter. They got him off the couch because they ran out of quarterback. Flacco wasn't even signed to a team. No, no I'm talking about started. the Jets. I'm talking about the Jets. Oh, yeah, like, last year. Jets. Last year he was yeah. the backup, yeah. Yeah, okay. but the thing with Baker Mayfield, I mean, I mean, he went to Carolina and then they and then they shipped him to the Rams. He, he did great. He did great with the Rams, but the Rams Rams wanted nothing to do with him. So he goes to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay had no hope. And he led them to the playoffs. I agree. Even that. though that division is weak, I still would have given it to Baker. And yeah. not just that, he's a cool guy. I like Baker. I do too. But I mean, uh, back on person, topic, Jerry. The only other person I could think of would be maybe, I mean, he missed five games where Cooper Cup had a decent year. He was out all year last year. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. I, I like but the Flacco not, story. I think that's a good call. So I'm okay with it. All right. Um, well, we'll get to that. It's uh, are you done with your number five? Was I speaking? Or did you go? Uh, yet? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that was who's crying now, right? Or center my love. Center my love. Center my love. Center my love. Rose is never fade. All right, Mark, go ahead. Number five. Uh fuck! I love this band. You can't have a fucking power battle without the great Peter Cetera singing lead on it. The fucking uh. Hard to say I'm sorry, Chicago. Good song. Yeah. I was like love that fucking song. Love yes. Mission Satira, man. Okay, so that's my number I five. Would, if I was gonna pick a Chicago song from the 80s, I would pick like uh 
What's that one? Fucking. I like the um. Uh... Oh, what what was it? To break. What song is that? Hard, hard habit, to, habit break. to break. Yeah, hard habit to break. That's a good one I like too. The one with uh, with Jason Sheck. Wait, wait, hold on. Look away. No, that's not look away. Yes, look Wade's away. Well, look away found... is look away is Chap Bill Chaplin singing. But Jason was or, on bass. Uh... Oh, that one song yeah. they came out with Chicago eighteen that he sang lead on, huh? Jason Sheck. Uh, fucking Chicago look eighteen. Away. What kind of man should I be? Yeah, one? maybe that one. What, what kind of man, man will I be? I don't know. I, don't know. I also like You Are the Inspiration. Yeah, that's a good one, though. Hard yeah. hard for me to say I'm sorry? Is that the one? Yeah. Like any those, any any songs. God, you're, na- you're naming all of them. I can't stand I already, bu- I already put Hard to Say I'm Sorry. That was my <laughs> oh pick, my Jerry. God. Okay, with, my bad, then. I'm done yeah, with my, my pick. It's your turn, Jerry. <laughs> all right, fine. Okay. <laughs> My number five is going to be from somebody. I'm still hoping he's. Why on did we tour. zone out on Chicago? All right, I don't go know. ahead. <laughs> because 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 you brought that shit up and Peter's terror infects my brain like a fucking Trojan horse worm. Okay, I can't. He I like to do he it for sure. Terrible. He's great before the eighties. I like <laughs> that. Do what you do with share. I'm gonna see if you guys. Then, it, then in the eighties, all of a sudden he was like, "Dude, I'm the shit." <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see if you guys game. He guess my that. number five. My Shit, number five. Number see, five? If can, Sticks? see if you can guess. See if you can guess it. Oh, Peter oh, Gabriel, geez. in your eyes. <laughs> in your oh, eyes. Uh, That's a great I fucking one. love that song, dude. And I'm hoping he, he hasn't announced any date close to me yet, but if he does, I'm definitely there to see him. Bucket list so concert for me. Love that song, dude. Uh, I love uh, The Secret World was, Live is good DVD. Yeah, with Paula Cole. Yeah. yeah. Fucking awesome. Where he's bouncing man. in the ball. Yeah, that last album he did was fucking with the Barry Williams show was so good. I love uh, yeah. up. I love that album. But yeah, that's my number five. So let's go with your number four, Andy. Wait, what was your number five? I got lost in it. What? Oh, in your eyes, Peter Gabriel. Oh, Peter what, Gabriel. You want to know? And you want to know what's interesting? So there's two things interesting about that. One, in your eyes is such a complex song for a ballad. Like it's so complex. It's got all those African beats, and mm. it's just so very interesting. The second thing that's interesting is that there's a little known movie called The Rocker with Rain Wilson in it. And, yeah, he, plays in, and yeah. he plays in a band called ADD and they do a cover version of that song that is fucking remarkable and I cannot find it recorded anywhere. I can't is that the movie it. where he's got long hair? Yes. Yeah. He plays drums. I, I, that's, and there's drummer. something familiar about that. Yeah. yeah. yeah he yeah, plays yeah. drums and like for his nephew um, high school band. Josh Gad. Josh Gad plays the nephew. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of great people in the movie, like uh, Fred Armisen's in it, and, and uh, what's his face, uh, the other fucking guy that I love. Uh, I it was kind of like School of Rock before School of Rock. Yeah, yeah, Bradley Cooper's in it. He makes a cameo. Yeah. It's a fucking great movie. It's really yeah. underrated. But the thing that's interesting is that In Your Eyes is in there, and it's like done by this band, which is like this alt rock, like indie rock band. And it's so good, and I can't find it anywhere. I want to so badly, and I can't find it. <laughs> Huh, that's so all anyway, that they can find it. But it's a great song. It's, it's yeah, one of my yeah. favorite songs of all time. So good pick. Really good. All right, Andy, number four, man. Yeah, my, uh, my number four is going to be off of this album here. An Aussie oh. song. Oh. Aussies. I'm going to go with No More Tears. A power ballad, though? Not a power ballad, but I'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> okay, I'll pick another one off. Mama, of I'm coming <laughs> home. Mama, I'm coming I'll home. Go time after time, then. Time after time. That's a good That's one. That's a good one. But no, I will go it's... back to No More Tears. All right, <laughs> no more tears. <laughs> well, I'm fucking picking it. I don't give a shit what you say. If it's uh, That's that cool, was, man. That, no More Tears yeah. was the introdu- the world's introduction to Zach Wilde. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not true. I'm lying. No, I was no, that's, the, that's on the album Andy sent me. No Crazy Rest for the Wicked. Crazy Babies. Yeah. Crazy Babies. Crazy Baby. Good album but, and no, but no more tears was the song that showed us what Zach Wild's sound was eventually. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I don't Absolutely. think that's a ballad, a power ballad. No. Oh, that's a heavy really light song. in the wind. That's a heavy, a heavy ass, ass song. It's a heavy ass. ass. It's a dun 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 dun. dun, 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 dun. You know. Yeah. To each their own. If you think it's oh. a ballad, then it's a ballad. It's cool, man. You picked it. It's, it's your good. list, brother. It's your list. Thank you. Do what you're gonna do. All right, Chris, number four. My number four is from a very obscure band. 
that has a legendary guitarist that very few people forget, like remember, like they very few people remember that this guy had a band. His name is Gary Hoey. Oh, the oh, band is oh, called oh. the band is called Heavy Bones. Yes, T A in the A M. I have that fucking CD. Them. That I'm album not familiar rules. With them. The song is not called familiar. "Turn It On," which is yes. a phenomenal song. Yes, just an incredible song. Really, like what a great underrated, underspoken about band. Uh, I, I played that on that metal station all the time. That whole album, dude. The metal, I can the, love the it. Album, the album came out in '92. It's a great album cover. Hideous artwork on this album. Oh, a horrible album cover. <laughs> but great, great album. Good music. It's a shame that Gary Hoey didn't like collaborate more with other people. He's got because... good solo stuff, man. Yeah, but this song, this album mm. is the best stuff he's ever done. And I Gary like Gary Hoey, Hoey rules. I like Gary Hoey, but this is the best stuff he's ever done. Oh, yeah. I T A T was T M in the A M. You know, that four, fucking four, you know, it's four uh, four AM T M. Yeah, Frankie Benali. Frankie Benali was the drums in this yeah. on this album. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Yeah. oh now you out. guys are interested in it. What's yeah, their right? name? What's their name? Heavy Bones. Heavy Bones. One yeah, album, right? dude. They have one album. Yeah, they only have don't one album. It came out in 1992. It's on all the streaming sites. It's fucking good. It's great. really good. It's a great, great cool. album. Oh, that's gonna be a review. I love some new music. Heavy yeah, Bones. No, it's man. good, man. It's really good. It's really right, good. Cool. Remember that I want to review that on Freeform. All right, Mark. Number four, man. Number four, everybody knows me. I just saw this band live. It's not Sister Christian. It's from the album Big Life. It's called Color of Your Smile. Hmm. If I can, it's the color of your smile. It's the color of your smile. Got my senses out with the color I gotta of your be smile. On, I got to be honest and tell you that outside of the hits, Night Ranger's not my gig, but uh, not at all. Dude, fucking harmonies up the <laughs> ass on this fucking song. The fucking guitar, the solos. Fucking a uh, Jack's voice. I love that fucking song. I love that album, and I do like the secret of my success. So fuck off. I love that song. Thank I you. love that movie. Thank you. Me I too. Michael movie. J. Fox rules, and you all drool if you think he doesn't. All right. Very very underrated movie. It's a good. The movie. color of your um, smiles. My number four by Night rules. Ranger. <laughs> my number four is a song that will definitely piss Mark off. That's why I'm not. I'm just kidding. Awesome. This one, def- you won't like this song, Mark, but I fucking love it. Because I'm a huge Dennis DeYoung nut swinger. I love fucking Desert Moon. I don't care what anybody oh, says. Good song. Good album. Love that fucking song, dude. Oh, this... no. On a desert moon. No. Oh, what a fucking great tune That's that Celine is, dude. Celine Dion before I even knew who she was. It's a, fu- it's a, tip- it's a fucking stick song, dude. That's it's a Celine a Dion album. type first off, album. First off, get, first off, get your comp right. Dennis DeYoung without sticks is Barry Manilow. Okay, get it together. That's well, whatever. Right. I hate Barry Manilow. You know, hey, no, 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 no. Don't ever did, step did it the not, man did it, not, it worked. It pissed Mark off. So, yeah, I told you it would piss him off. But I love that song. I, uh, I, I have it, the CD. I don't like it. Well, then why do you have the CD? Because I thought it would be good. It was Dennis <laughs> Young. I bought it, and it sucked. It sucked balls. Let's be real. Cool video. Cool hey, tune. It was Dennis awesome, Young. Dude. his last three solo albums were amazing. They're Desert all good, Moon, in my opinion. No. I tell you what. You mix Desert Moon... Girls with Gun by Tommy Shaw's and JY City Slickers together. You take the three, the, the best songs off those three albums. You got a kick ass fucking oh, stick God. album right there. Girls with Guns is fucking amazing with Lonely It School. is. That's did what I'm say saying. Amazing? God damn. Did you, wait, did you just say that album was amazing? I love it. Ugh. I love I'm Ambition. Atomic... Ambition. Dude, a... I saw him open up for Rush I'm on the Hold atomic... Fire tour on that tour. Fucking great album, too. He's got a Tommy fucking Survivor oh. cover on there ever since the world began. Fucking brother, great fucking cover, too, brother, man. I'm a Tommy Shaw fanboy from way back. So am Tommy I. Shaw, Tommy Shaw can take his fairy feathered hair on the cover of that album <laughs> and stick it right up his ass. Because every time I hear an interview about him railing on Dennis the Young for the ballads he produced, and then the first fucking thing he does is put out Lonely School? Go fuck yourself. Oh, he put Tommy out Shaw's Girls a... with Guns first. Yeah. And that song's another one. Fuck Tommy Shaw. Don't put fuck your him. back against Look, the wall. I love Tommy Shoot Shaw, but that straight, dude needs, like, how fucking, how fucking high was he? And how much of a hypocrite is he? At least J.Y. came out with fucking ballsy album when he came out with something after talking shit about Dennis the Young, fuck Tommy Shaw with that shit. I like yeah, what if. Yeah, like JY's out. Jay's Y out. JY's album was that written, written with that dude that did the Miami Vice soundtrack. What's his name? Uh, 
Hey, girl. Jan Hammer, is that his name? Jan Hammer. That? I don't know. Uh, but... Hammer. Yeah. I love Tommy cool Shaw. Album. It's a great album. But anyway. You know what, Jerry? You like Desert Moon? Enjoy. I, I like Desert enjoy. Moon. As a matter of fact, and... I'm going to listen to that when I'm, I'm done. I get off the show tonight. And, well, good and... for you. And side and note, I don't, <laughs> I don't, and, and side note, I don't hate girls with guns. I just hate the fact that it's so hypocritical. I just, it did, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, what do you uh, like better, girls with guns or desert moon? I think they're both equally mediocre. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, Compa- compared to sticks, compared to sticks. Well, yeah. This was no, the best ever. Could- yeah. This was the best, this was the best effort these two could come up with. Like, seriously, like, but and, it was, and it's enjoyable see- for me. And the problem with it, what bothers me, is that Dennis Young did exactly what he wanted to do. There's not very much different. Yeah, because he's a Broadway he, singer. There's not, there's not can... very much different from what he produced on Kilroy than what he did on Desert Moon. It's just less... no, no. Kilroy had better songs. That, that Desert right, Moon was he, just like it does, like a Barry Manilow. Because the better songs on Kilroy were Tommy Shaw and JY. But if you take Don't Let It End and Haven't We Been Here Before and put it on Desert Moon, they're the same. Like, they're, they're oh. more or less the same. And with that being said, Tommy Shaw did nothing but rail on the lack of rock that was on Kilroy or the ballads that made him gazillions of dollars with Babe, which launched that band into a whole different stratosphere. Babe, I'm leaving. And, and, and that motherfucker me, comes around and produces the same shit. <laughs> it's hypocritical and, mentioned, and bullshit. And he lets you kill Roy. He said, haven't we been here before and just get through the night, which are ballads. Now, just get through the night's a much better song. I'll be honest. And that's tell a you ballad, that. that's though. A, that's a Tommy Shaw song, though. That's that's a, that's a legit Tommy but Shaw. It's, that's a, in, if, if, that, it's a ballad, though. Once yeah, you it is. It is, but it's not in the vein of, like, first first time or oh bad. god it's, i hope not it's yeah not, it's not that bad it's <laughs> first more, time it's, sucks it's like that um um uh, make it through the night uh yeah uh f- i forget the name of that song fuck just get through just the get night. through the night is more in in line with like crystal ball and I, i'm uh, surprised that, none of you picked fucking sweet madam blue damn there's still time not... oh there's still time <laughs> oh <laughs> that's a ballad about the flag fucking great all right enough of dennis jung let's go to our number what are we on number three yeah, Andy. I remember going home after school and watching Dal MTV. This song was on there constantly, and it is still one of my favorite power ballads off of this album here, mm. off of Under Lock and Key. I'm going with In My Dreams. It's still the same. Your love is strong, and still remains. I I can't argue with that, yep. man. So again, I, I, it's not love could be a ballad on there too, man. No, yeah. it can't be. Oh, and, how, how about and, will and, the sun will the sunrise? Maybe, but will the sunrise in my, dream, in my dreams is still a little too upbeat and far as as far as I'm concerned to be considered a power ballad. Oh. But lyrically, it's 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 in vain for sure. Mm. Uh in that vein. And then I will uh am I next? Yes. yes. I will piggyback your docking pick and pick the power ballad off of Tooth and Nail, Ooh. Alone Again, which Ooh. was one of the best power ballads there of all is. time. Period. What a there's fun song to play on guitar. I didn't pick it because I thought Jerry would pick it. Now, the only thing I will say is that I was listening to my list uh, today and I put both live version and the regular version of this song. And the live version, the guitar solo on the live version is so much better than the studio version of this song. But... Still, the guitar solo on on Tooth and Nail is very good too. So, docking alone again. I try so hard to make you see. Great fucking. Because I'm alone again without you. Sebastian hey, Bach. Sebastian Bach did a version of that on the TNN album. Very good. Good for him. Version of it. All right, Mark. What was with Jeb Pilson and and George Lynch too? Cool. Okay. Mark number three, brother. Number three. Uh, I'm going to the Toys in the Attic album by uh, Aerosmith. You Big tennis record. You see me crying. Oh, there's a left field one. That's a good song, man. Fucking, yeah, that's yeah. one of the. We went through all errors, man. And fucking Aerosmith, the Home Tonight. You see me crying in the '70s. Fucking great ballads, but I I was struck between Home Tonight and You See Me Crying. I had to pick You See Me Crying. Fucking great, fucking powerful ballad, man. Good pick. 
You know what? I got a loan again on a 45 somewhere. That's what I was looking for. I tell it. It must be somewhere else. All right, Mark. We're matching again, dude, on our number three. We got the same band. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's funny. Um, I'm going to go with. Where the fuck? Uh, if you pick Don't Miss a Thing, I'm going to kill myself. I don't want to. Huh? What'd you say? I'm going to pick I don't want to. What'd you say? He's picking Armageddon soundtrack now. I don't say that, Chris, because that's his favorite song. He might come up. Oh, I'm I I'm going I'm gonna I'm to change that real quick. Now, anyway. I thought, I thought you were going to say don't say that because Jerry. Dolan you better not say crying. I think I'm going to cross that one off too. Shit. <laughs> I'm no, I'm a, I'm a, if you said if amazing, you know, if we've we've done Aerosmith reviews and talked about Aerosmith. If you don't know what my favorite awesome. Aerosmith song is, then I don't know. You haven't been watching Seasons of Wither. Yeah, yeah. I heard that favorite today, Aerosmith yeah. song. I don't even. Man, like what Aerosmith a fucking that's a good song. What a great tune! And it was so sad because they do that song live and people are just like going out to the bathroom. They don't know it because it's. I guess it's kind of a deep track, maybe a minor hit, maybe. But man, I was sitting in the seat just fucking it's in a love, hit dude. among their fans. Man, I'm telling you, what a great tune that is. Yeah. Man. Fucking album love rock. It. Yeah. All right. That's the number three. Now we're at number two, Andy. My number two, I went with a live version of this song by, um, um, it's off of this album, Worldwide Live by the Scorpions. And I am going to go with, of course, it's got to be um, Still Loving You. Oh, that's great, a great song, one. man. I love that song. I love Claus's vocals on there. The whole band, it just has that dramatic feel yeah. throughout the song. And um, it builds up, and it's great. So Still still Loving You. I was going to pull it off of the studio album, but, man, it's so good um, on Worldwide yeah. Live. One of the best live albums ever to me. Yeah. Oh yeah, I wish, Bel- right. I wish Believer would have been a bigger hit. I kind of like that album from that. Yeah, I love I, Scorpions, man. I sold that, that was a really like good album, bucks. and I was <laughs> really oh. yeah. I have that on vinyl too. I do too. <laughs> Original pressing. I, I might sell it. I had the CD too. So fuck it. Maybe I sold it for sixty five bucks. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, what are we on, Chris? Your number. My number Three two. Well, two since uh, since Mark stole. <laughs> my uh warrant bitter pill i'm going to go with the other great ballad i mean he's he Janie's written a bunch of them but i saw red oh that's a good one is great possibly song. the best representation of a breakup song i think i've ever heard like lyrically um very well sung uh just a wonderfully well written song and Excellent acoustic version exists as well. Yeah. Uh it's just a great, great song. Huge hit, top ten single. Um, just a just a really good, just overall one of the cornerstone ballads of that era. Um, I saw red warrant. It's yeah. like I saw red and I closed the door. I don't I, think I'm gonna love you anymore. Fucking he I sees saw, it, he sees he sees his girl cheating on him. You know, yeah, I saw like, Warren a couple I saw, I'm sorry, Mark. Oh, uh, now I'm that. just saying that song, like Chris is saying, is so powerful lyrically. Mm-hmm. He sees his girl cheating on him. He says, "He, cl- I saw red and I closed the door. I don't think I'm going to love you anymore. You know, it's just like deeply hurt him immediately. Oh. Fucking amazing song. Go ahead, Jerry. I was just going to say, I saw Warren a couple, uh, two years ago. Their new singer is terrible. Sorry. Oh, I love Robert Mason. <laughs> he just, he, I, he mentioned I saw red. Just let him sing that song. He just totally butchered it. I like I him mean, with Lynch Mob. I don't like him singing Warren songs. Yeah. I like him with the end. I like him with the end machine. I mean, it sounds like Lawrence Gowan trying to sing "Lady." It just doesn't fucking cut it. Man. But Sorry. but but I'm saying I, I have no problem with Lawrence Gowan, so I can't I, I can't do. agree with that that analogy. But uh, I agree with you, with Robert Mason. Yeah. Robert Mason is good on his albums that he did with Warren, not the Janie songs. I don't his like original material Warren. is really good. I like it. I don't harder, like larder, Warren. faster. I love that album, man. I don't like any of the new Warrant at all. Uh, I do. Lane. I can hear the difference in the songwriting. It's just not nearly as good. Well, that's just me. All right, I'm Mark. Just saying. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Number two, man. Well, I'm just gonna say I've been around for you, been up and down for you, but I still can't get any relief. I lived in life where you swallowed my pride for you, pride for you, but you still make me feel like a thief. You got me stealing your love away because you never give it. Peel into years away and we can't relive it. 
I make you laugh. Believe it. Maybe you make me, me cry because it's time for me to fly. <laughs> what fucking lyrics? That's fucking poetry right there. Ario fucking Speedwagon from You Could Tune a Piano, that's, but you can't yeah. tune a fish. That's a I think that's one song. of the best all time fucking lyrics and ballad of all the acoustic, the harmonies. The fucking just the the emotion that Kevin is singing in that song, I fucking love it. I just can't get past the fact that Kevin Cronin always just looked like a dad. <laughs> great front man, I've seen him live uh, several you know, times. Yeah, he's great. He's a great musician. He's a great singer. Great piano player. Like great front. Dad. Like he looks like a dad. Dude, he, he just looks like a dad. Just like I mean, I hate to say this, it's gonna sound awful, and Mark is gonna know exactly what I'm talking about when he sees Mr. Big. Eric Martin looks like a soccer mom. I know he does. He's got that short. I got pictures with him from Rock and Potty. I got pictures of Eric Martin. I say it's even he worse does. now because like he's he choking me. He's like this, choking me. He's just like I'll send it to you. He looks like a soccer mom. Like he's just dropped the kids off at, at camp, yeah. and now he's gonna come perform a show for everybody. Like it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. These guys. Some of them. Some of them just don't look right. <laughs> yeah, Jer Jerry beat me to my chorus, you fucker. But <laughs> thank you. That's my number two. Uh, my number two is. Very polished and very produced, uh, but nevertheless, it's a fucking one of my favorite songs of all time, sung by the late great Benjamin Orr of the Cars. Drive, go on with Drive, man! Nice. What a great freaking song that is. You man. could have picked a lot by the Cars. That oh, uh, what an underrated like fucking song. vocalist Ben Orr was, man! Dude, That's just a good song, dude. Yeah, it and is, that song man. came out of nowhere too. I remember when that song became a hit. Like I vaguely remember that, and it was like a big deal because everybody only knew Rick Ocasek, and like it was just like all of a sudden it was like this one song with this different singer, and like I didn't. I, he had know, just I what I needed, and all that, all that other stuff. Let's yeah. go. He was yeah, he was before like that song. No, he was... I understand that, but you got to understand yeah. during the MTV era. Yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, and yeah, just what true. I needed were not hits. No, yeah, it was magic. And you might think, mm -hmm. and then drive was the third song. Oh, and, sh and shake it up before the shake it up. That video was all over MTV. Yeah, that was too. Yeah, but and not, si not and, si much, and since you're gone, it was all Rick yeah. Ocasek. Yeah, the Heartbeat yeah. City ones were Heartbeat. all over the place. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I remember the magic video when he's walking on water. Like, yeah. that was that, that was, was amazing. Friday night yeah. videos, man. Yeah. <laughs> Those were good times, man. They were well, Benjamin Drive's Ord. You could song, also pick song. like from his solo album, Stay the Night great fucking song no too. i i picked drive i think drive is one of the I, best songs ever written in my opinion it's a top five yeah. song for me i always love it's a good it, song so. it's a great song awesome pick but anyway number ones all right we're down to the the meat of the potato yeah uh my my number one um has always been one of my favorite songs by, by this man i know that chris doesn't like this album because he he mentioned it the other day on black spinner it's gonna be off a of theater of pain. <laughs> I didn't say that. That wasn't me. I like that album. That was the I like that album too. Oh, you, you know what you did? It was um, uh, it was the other Chris. Yeah, yeah. But um, home sweet home. Absolutely love that song. Off of theater of pain. I couldn't find the album until until recently, so I had pulled out the cassette. Mm, but there um, you go. I mean, I'll say I'll say that home sweet home, home sweet home to me, is the beginning of the end of Motley Crue being good. Uh, after they tasted that success from that song, it, like Girls, Girls, oh, Girls. Like that song, or Without You, off of, oh, God, my God, oh. that was, that was one of those never-ending songs that are just, uh would you yeah. just stop time, already? Time for Change and Without You. Without You is better. Time for Change really sucks. Uh, I, I, you terrible. I love Dr. Feelgood. I mean, uh, Girls, 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 and Dr. Feelgood. Dr. Feelgood's got some decent songs. But anyway, back to Home Sweet Home. Great song. Yeah. Great album. Beginning of the end for Motley yeah. Crue, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that that was my, 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 my last album by them that I really dug. Well, Other than that, I really have nothing for them. I mean, well, I you got a album, but. You got to also think about that Motley Crue album started the trend of uh, let's have a rocker, then the second single be a. Yeah. Like in ballad, Motley yeah, Crue started the power cool. ballad right there, and then every right, band was, after them had to have a fucking power ballad. I think it was the it's first the true big power ballad. Yeah, I think it's true. I that's think it's a true. great pick, Andy. Oh yeah, man, it's one of the most um, important songs when it comes to this genre, and it really is. And I remember the video vividly. I mean, mm -hmm. it's etched in my head. So, 
Home Sweet Home is my number one by Motley Crue, 1985. Nice. Um, off of Theater of Pain. I remember the video clearly because the 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 one part of the video with the girl who ha was having her shirt ripped yeah. or whatever, yeah. she yeah. looked like my babysitter who was my brother's girlfriend. Like she looked exactly like her. Oh, like really? so much so that I'm like, Frank? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> is that your girlfriend, dude? <laughs> He's like, it might be. <laughs> So, yeah, anyway. I'm sorry I got y'all confused on that, Chris. Uh, but no, you're right, no. it was the other Chris. Doesn't matter. It was the same I, show, though. I think that album, that album gets pan. I, like I don't like smoking in the boys' room. I fucking hate that song with a Me deep too. dark passion. But like songs like "Save Our Souls" and "Save uh, Our Souls," "Louder man. Than Hell" is a great song. Some like yeah. a louder, um, some like Boy a louder, Blues. like a louder, like louder. Um, City Boy Blues is a good song. City Boy Blues, uh, it's yeah. a great. It's a that's a that's a solid album. It's still got some yeah, very heavy really songs is. on there. I know it's yeah. completely different from "Shout Out the Devil." It is. Oh, it's yeah. very it's different. So it's totally different. That's it's when good. they went uh, pastel crew. Yeah, it's visually different. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's pastel yeah. crew. So it, they got it. They got away from fucking looking demonish to like girlish. Yeah. No, to look like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's pastel crew. Look at Vince. Yeah, there's there's, yeah, right. there's the style. Yeah, but my mom gave me this for Christmas the year it came out. Nice. Wow. Still, That's an original from '85. Huh? That's an original from '85. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well done. That's dope. Well That's done cool. taking care of it all these years. Yeah, dude, I had all some... those, I had all those albums too, but I fucking don't know what the hell happened to them. Mine over got the years. mine got stolen in 1999 out of my house. So, um, the thing is, is that doing it right. Um, I was hanging out with my uncles, and I had a little record collection with everything that I had been collecting. I was like 16, and I was getting deep into rap, and I was telling my uh, one of my uncles, I was out here, take all my records. I don't, I don't listen to rock and roll anymore and then my other uncle goes hold on eddie you're gonna change your mind one day i go oh hell no i'm never gonna he listen to right. rock and roll again right. well one well one year later i sat down and i heard the beatles so that changed everything it changed everything for me wonderful so that's a cool story i dig it yeah. all right chris number one man all right before i get to my number one i do want to mention something out of all of these hair metal bands that we've been talking and bandying about and the whole thing, can yeah. anybody here name the one really big hair metal band that did not ever rely on a power ballad ever to be hey. successful? Never even, I don't even think there's one on any of the albums. I'm not 100% sure. It's been a while since I listened to their entire catalog, but there's one band. That had no power ballad hit. I have no idea. Out of all eighties, eighties band, eighties band, hair band. metal. And I'm not band. talking about like like Quiet Riot. They only had two big hits. They, well, they Tesla, Tesla had Love Song. That was a pretty big power ballad. Rat, um, CDC. Rat, Art? Rat, Rat's the one. Rat, Rat never did a ballad. Yeah. Never ever. It wasn't no, in Stephen Piercy's DNA. He's like, fuck that shit. I'm just fucking everything. That's true. They never done a ballad, yeah. <laughs> no, they never no, did it. They never did it. I was impressed. It was always... Oh, you know what? They did it on when later albums. Through... They did have a ballad on later albums after the 80s. So Did they? Because I, I know yeah, they did. the Cellar Invasion, Your Privacy, and Reach for the Sky had none. Oh, they I mean, had, they had ballad. I think they had ballads on uh, the one with uh, Shame, Shame, Shame on their death. Was... I think, there was a I think there was a ballad but, on Dead. But regardless of that, they never released them as singles. Like they yeah. never ever became true. hits ever. So. Shame, shame, shame was the single off that album. Yeah. Anyway. I just wanted to this was showing and I thought that I'd pull it out. Oh, before. that's a good that one. That's People really are look cute. that's worth money right there, dude. That that's worth money. Fun. I've sold I've sold that one for over 50 bucks. That now. one's hard to find, dude. That EP. Uh -huh. Fucking A. Yeah. Back I used to have that until nineteen ninety nine. Somebody stole my shit. Back yeah. for More is one of my favorite songs ever. Fucking love that. Yeah, that's my favorite. That's my favorite rap song, actually. Yeah, that's a cool. great, great. Which song. version on the uh, Out of the Cellar? Out of the Cellar. One? I like out the Out of the cellar. cellar version better, but still, yeah. either way, it was I different like on that one. Man. Yeah, and I, I love, love that, 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 that that acoustic intro just fucking rocks, you know. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I mean, it's a fucking, fucking badass fucking rat intro, is man. Massively underrated. Massive. Yeah. They were so big for that era, like so big. Steve I know that we did a vinyl battle between them, and 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 um, I went against them. I mean, I mean, I do like Rat, but I think we did Out of the Cellar versus um, uh, 
Shout out to Double. Ooh, that's a weird track by track. I think out of the I remember that one, album. Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I think, shout out, the devil, I think shout out the devil won, you're right. Yeah, I don't I think I was on that one. I don't remember I that one. Were, uh, I no, like it was me, Mark, and Al, and um, yeah, I think it might have been um, Joseph. Hey, happy birthday, Joseph! Happy birthday, Joseph! Yeah, it might it might have been Charles, maybe, maybe, probably. No, it wasn't Charles. Was no. Charles? No. In right. any case, my, anyway, number any, one, Chris. Sorry, my number one, in my opinion, is the greatest true ballad that's ever been. I've seen a live performance of this song which will rank in the top five of all time live performances. It, especially it's the all-time greatest Super Bowl performance I've ever seen. And that's Purple oh. Rain by Prince. Nice one. Oh my God. A seven-minute ballad that doesn't quit ever. And it's 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 the story of like like it's just the lyrics are amazing it's w w upon doing the deep dive of that album which i did like i think a year or two ago when i i did a video on purple rain uh i, I, I have that some, vinyl with the original poster in it i did a series called perfect albums and purple rain is a perfect album like mm -hmm. to the t um and that song was the first time that i realized how much because then i went and read listened to the rest of his catalog how much print emulated Jimi Hendrix, it's shocking oh, yeah. to me. Yep. Um, and, and I never put it together before because Prince is more of a pop artist overall, I guess. But like, I never really realized how much he emulates Jimi Hendrix at times. And that mm. song is the perfect example. It's fucking just, that's awesome. Is that in shrink wrap, dude? Or is that in a plastic? No, that's in a plastic bag. Okay, because I was going to say, if you got that in shrink wrap, dude, that's like a $500 record. That's not even joking. It that's has the original poster in here. Yeah, it's pretty dope, dude. That's... When uh, you're saying emulating Jimmy, what do you mean by that? In the way he plays way. guitar. The way he plays guitar, the way he sings, the whole kind of rambling, the way he does the verses, the way never, never change of your mind, but da, 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 like his whole cadence, the way he goes about uh, delivering the song, the way that he goes about delivering the verses, his guitar tone, his guitar playing, the way that the, the way that he rips into the solos. Okay. I'm sorry. Say that again. No, no. I'm just you know, I, I, I just don't see them being close to me. Oh, okay. Well, Prince could Prince, play anything, how much, man. How much Prince have you listened to? Because he's got a lot. He's got. I mean, his guitar work is very, very extensive. I've got to. to I've, I've got to admit, I've, I've listened to Jimmy a lot, a lot more than Prince. I mean, I'm not. Look, look. I think Prince is a, a massively underrated guitarist, and I think he's. I would rank him as one of the best in my lifetime. Okay. He's in the, like right. the top 15 to 20 in my lifetime. Okay. okay. He's not Hendrix. Okay. That's not trying to put that out there. What I am okay. trying to put out there is that he was definitely massively influenced by Hendrix. And it's oh, yeah. Obvious. Definitely. No, and it's obvious. Like, and it's obvious. Like, if you listen to Purple Rain, go listen to like The Wind Cries Mary or like Hey Joe. Versus hey, the way, yeah. versus the way that shit. Prince sings "Purple mm -hmm. Rain," and there's a very, very strong similarity to the way that he delivered delivers the song. And then, sure. from a guitar standpoint, um, I mean, even things like when when he played "Purple Rain" live, especially during the Super Bowl performance, there was a part where yeah. he goes, "Here, can I play this guitar?" Like, that's a fucking Hendrix callback. That's if there's really ever lying. been one. Like, if there's ever been one. So, like, there's no doubt in my mind that that dude was, like, totally channeling Hendrix during that song. And I don't know, like, you, I don't know. It, to me, it's one of the most brilliant songs ever written, period. When you can carry a seven-minute song at that pace without much of a change. Like, there's not much of a change in the song. It's basically no, the same no, three or four chords same. throughout the it's whole song. Rhythm but it's because of his charisma and the way that he delivers it. And then the way that he rips the guitar solo and the charisma coming through his guitar. Prince was the best, like of all time that, that all that shit that went on during the eighties with him and Michael Jackson. I love Michael Jackson, but to me, Prince buries Michael Jackson on almost every I front. agree. It's like not even close. Fuck and Michael yeah. Jackson was one of the greatest performers of all time. I'm not trying to take anything away right. from him. I just think Prince was so head and shoulders above. It's insane. Like it's just insane. So, all right, all right, trivia time. Okay. Trivia time. That's what my bit. Super, what Super Bowl halftime show game was that? I don't remember. It was in Miami. 
and it's remarkable because he actually it actually rained while he it was did. playing Purple Rain. Oh, yeah, and it, it stormed. One the, dude, it's one of the greatest performances I've ever seen. The guy had enough balls. The guy had enough balls to like. He even played a Foo Fighters cover, like a contemporary. Yeah, did. He did a contemporary cover, dude. Not like some classic or like you know a Hendrix cover. No, he did um, the Best of You, which yeah. was a hit song yeah. at the time. That to me shows such a level of like not only confidence in yourself, but like, um, but reference going for, for music that what's going on at the time. It's so yeah. fucking cool. And then when you hear mm-hmm. stories of Dave Grohl talking about jamming with Prince um, later on in his career, it's just, it's remarkable, man. Like the whole Prince thing, but go watch it. I forget what, I'll look at it. I'll send you. I'll the giant, you the giant, Giants Patriots, 1714 Giants. Was it Giants? Was that, uh, was that, no, that I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, no, it was the no, no, it was. It was that. It was that it long was ago. Sure. I think it was Seattle. Um, no. I'm gonna look it up. You guys go. Seattle on. Patriots. I, was, I thought it was. A, I thought it was a Giants there. Patriots game. No, it was definitely raining, and it was in Miami. It was. It was a messy game. Yeah. Yeah, but that Giants uh, Pats game, um, that's too long ago because this was pretty recent. Or 2007. Or 2007. 2007. 2007. Uh, Giants and Patriots. Was it Giants Patriots? Yeah. Did it rain during that game? I don't was that the that. David Tyree catch? I got the live concert right here. Might have been the second one. That's a great DVD, by the way. That concert's fucking killer. The one in Syria. Is that the one from Syracuse? Yes. Yeah, it's so good. I remember watching that. And plus TV. the live CDs that come with it. Very great. Fucking amazing guy yeah i'm just right, well, much, i guess well chris is looking that up let's go for your number one mark my number one if anybody knows me and chris we both love this band i was torn between one slower song off uh 2112 called tears but this band doesn't really make ballads really they don't they're not a ballad band i don't even think they do power ballads at all but yeah. time stand still was a power ballad yeah, sure, I'll take it. Whatever. Yeah, that that was the song we freeze this moment a little longer, make 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 each sensation a little bit stronger. Yeah, that, that 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 song makes me cry, dude. I don't even want to. It's a fucking ballad. It's a fucking time stand still. We, me and my wife, danced to that song our first day. I just sent so. you the the performance there, Jerry. All right, so time stand still is my but it was one. was it the Giants the Patriots? I'm looking I'm looking that up now. I just, oh, all right, I wanted to send you the video because it's worth gotcha. watching. All right, dude. ignore my song. It's cool. Football's more. We important. know your song, Rush. I'm not surprised. It's Rush. Whatever. It should be surprising because they don't. <laughs> Which make one was it? Which one was it again? Time stand still. Time stand still. It's a great song. Yeah. It was Super Bowl Forty Seven. No, wait, no, that's not right. It was the last Super Bowl I was in California, I remember. What Super Bowl did Prince play? Prince played Super Bowl halftime show in Miami, Florida, February 4th, 2007. It was Super Bowl XLI. Who played? Yeah, I was right. It was the Colts and the Bears. It was a rain game. I knew was it was it? A, I, yeah, I knew it was the, the Peyton Manning game. Um, because he really didn't have that great a game, but it was okay. really rainy and shitty. It was 29-17. I thought it was the Giants Patriots. Well, yeah, it was against Jake Cutler. It doesn't take that much. To <laughs> <Jake Cutler. laughs> well, I remember that. I remember that game. Devin Hester run the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Very badass, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, oh, my bad. I was no, yeah, sure. Peyton Manning was proven on that game. Proven wrong again. But I'm still but when we did, my number one is when we first did this, I thought we were doing uh, like romantic. Actually, it was it was Rex Grossman who quarterbacked the Bears in that game. Oh my, Rex Grossman, worse. Jake Cutler, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly the same thing. I mean, the real star of the game was Dominic Rhodes, who ran for 113 yards, and Joseph Adai ran for 77 yards. Peyton Manning got the MVP, but he only had an 81 rating. He was 25 for 38. He threw a pick. It was, it was Joseph Adai had a good couple of years. I remember the I remember the 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 game was kind of shit compared to the Super Bowl performance. Oh the yeah, the game was bad. Mm-hmm. The halftime performance is like incredible. Anyway, continue. And my number one, uh, like I said, where I thought we were doing like you know all romantic song because of Valentine's Day, so I picked I think is my favorite love ballad of all time by a band called the Climax Blues Band. I got a vinyl. I love you. Is the That's name of the song? One. 
Man, what a what a beautiful written love song that is, man. Oh, I know that song. Uh, Good song. Huh? I don't know if you I know, know that song. You if you heard it, you would uh you would Yeah, know you it. would know it. Yeah, yeah, I know that but, song uh, very well. I that's the only song I really know from them. I know they've had a lot of albums, but it's the only song I really know from them. So uh um yeah, just one of my all time favorite love songs, man. Love it. All right, honorable mentions, Andy. Any? Um, yeah, um, I really thought that this was gonna be an eighties hairband kind of ballads. Um, so I went with um one of the first ones that I had picked was by Slaughter off their debut oh, album. Yeah, I didn't know that song. Fly to the Which Angels. Is going to be um, uh, Fly with the Angels. Oh, Lori Carr. What a beautiful woman. Yeah. And um, also House of Pain by, I think it was Fester Pussycat. Yeah. Fucking love right? that song. Um, also The Flame by The Great Cheap Trick. Yeah. I love that song when that song first came out. And no, um, this is complete without Kiss doing Forever. So oh, those Michael are my Bolton own there. Little Michael Bolton love. Yeah. Forever. I like Bruce. I like Bruce's solo on that song. It's pretty kick ass. Yeah. Um, all right, That's Chris. A good song. That's a good song. I just, you know. Um, my honorables are uh, Miles Away by Winger. Good tune. Uh, yeah. I also had House of Pain by Fest of Pussycat because that's one of my all time favorites. Um, uh, These Dreams by Heart. Oh, good yeah. Good one. Uh, Love Bites. By Def Leppard. Good one. And uh, Lifting Shadows Off a Dream by Dream Theater. It's one of my I almost my picked Another now. Day by Dream Theater. And, well, the only reason I left Dream Theater off of it is because I don't think either one of those are technically power ballads. They're more. That's why it took Another Day off, too. Yeah. 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 I think they're more just ballady, just yeah. slow. But, yep, that's those are my five honorables. Mark. All right, man. Most of these will sound familiar. But uh, from the. Cheap Trick, uh, Sun Never Sets. That was another wedding song of ours. It's one of their newer albums. Uh, Zoom Bang or whatever it is. Great album. I love it. I can't remember the title yeah. right now. It has Zoom in there. Crazy Bang Zoom mm -hmm. or something. Sun Never yeah. Sets. The Stick, Sticks Lady. Uh, uh, Journey, <laughs> Journey Faithfully. REO Take It on the Run. Cheap Trick, Tonight It's You. Uh, Lou Graham, Midnight Blue. And Skid Row, I Remember You. Good tune. Uh, Midnight Blue is a good song. Yeah, yeah. I love that song. Yeah. Uh, mine are Looking to the Future from Journey, uh, Keep on Loving You, Aria Speedwagon, Typical, Babe Sticks, Typical, Heaven Warrant, Typical, Waiting for a Girl Like You, yeah. Corner. I have Heaven by Brian Adams. Oh, that's a good yeah, one. Brian Adams. I have Count yeah. on Me by Jefferson Starship. I don't know if it's really a ballad or not. It's kind of, but it's a slow tempo. You rock, know what have been guess. a good Jefferson Starship song? Save Your Love. Or Sarah. Save, oh, no, that's oh, Save Your Love. That solo by Craig. Oh, my God. Okay. I like the song, I get, Sarah. I got Every Time I Think of You from The Babies. Oh, nice. Arth I got Arthur's scene from Christopher Cross, man. Fucking great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. And then, of course, you got to have an Air Supply song in there. Lost in Love by Air Supply. Oh, you don't. Lost in love and I don't know my You didn't have a kiss song, Jerry. No, I did not. I figured I have one list without a fucking kiss song in it, you know. Huh? Anyway, um that was our that's our show. It was a really fun topic to talk about. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Yeah, All right, Andy, you got anything? Promotions, anything you want to talk about? Um next week on Monday, um, Jerry and I are going to have our final episode of the year of Great Iron Smackdown. We're going to do the football um, Super Bowl um, recap. And then um, on Tuesday, hopefully, we are going to be doing the um, doing the back-to-back um, -back episodes of recording for, for um, Three Shots three Down. Shots, yeah. Uh, we're going to be off Wednesday on Black Spinner Circle, so um, there's not an episode there because uh, it's Valentine's Day. So, oh. um, so uh, we're going to take that day off and spend the evening with, with our loved ones, and then I'll be back on Thursday here on the BS sessions doing the vinyl battle between um, Zeppelin One and Zeppelin Two. Cool, awesome! All right, Chris, you're up. um, I actually had to skip out on. Uh, promoting or putting out a video today, which is weird because usually Thursdays and Saturdays are my 
uh, my days to put out videos. But uh, as the people in this room know, but I'll just out to the public, like um, I had a death in the family last month mm. and I've been going back and forth to my hometown to deal with that nonsense constantly. So I went back there earlier this week. I'm going back there tomorrow. So my, uh, my schedule is going to be a little truncated, but the main points are Thursdays and Saturdays. Usually there'll be new videos on my channel on Thursdays and Saturdays. And, um, I will be starting a live stream at least once a week, if not twice a week, starting hopefully in March, along with other things going on, um, like a daily short and TikTok videos and all of the above. It's all red beard videos in every social media platform on this green earth of ours. It's red beard videos. That's how you find me. And thank you. What do you guys, thank you for you, having uh, me. Yeah, no, anytime. I love having you on. Andy, what are you doing with your wife? If I'm a, anything interesting or. Oh no. Well, we're going to be doing Don't stuff on the personal. weekend. You know, yeah. Yeah, the weekend before, the weekend after, because it's so so busy on Wednesday. But with it being being Valentine's Day, I would rather be doing something with her. You know, spending time with her over there instead of being in this room for a couple yeah. of hours on Valentine's night. What spending time with your wife? How dare you! I know, all right. <laughs> what are you uh, What are you doing, Chris? Your wife? Is, unless you want to, you don't want to talk about. I it. unfortunately. Uh, my full time job takes me away from the homestead that day, so oh, I'm, sorry I'm either going to I'm either going to do something with her on Tuesday or Thursday night. I haven't decided yet. She's always looking over my shoulder, though. Right there, there she yeah, is. I got gotcha. you. There you go. There she is. She's always right but, over my head, so she's always there. She's a good looking the, gal, man. She is. Thank you. Oh, uh, but the weekend after Thanksgiving, I, I mean, I mean wow. Valentine's. We're gonna go. Out Where for did pizza. you go? <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, we're going to go out for pizza and I want to go try out this pizza because it was voted by um, Esquire magazine as the best pizza in America. Oh, wow. So, I, I, think every, I, think, I, think, I think every city's got the best pizza in America. As a native <laughs> New Yorker, you all suck and just deal with that. <laughs> oh, dude, Chicago oh, pizza is no. the best, man. I'm no, sorry, no, dude. No, no, no. I've... Uh, I've gone to New York several times, and believe me, doesn't matter oh. where you get pizza, it's fantastic. Hey, it's hey, it's, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's we bad. We even do pizza, Chicago, Chicago pizza. We even do Chicago pizza better than Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Oh, God. Uh, but I've had them both. I've had them both in Chicago and in New York, and I love them both. But if I, I can I honestly choose, tell you, I, I'm not going to choose. <laughs> I can I can honestly tell you I've never been to Chicago, so I can't I can't dish on it too badly. But I can tell you that I've been to San Francisco, I've been to L.A., I've been to Vegas, I've been all over the fucking country. It, it just they all try to be New York, and it just fails. So yeah. <laughs> all right, Mark. All right, man. Uh, what we got going on Freeform Rock Podcast tomorrow? We got a Mooger Fugers pick called Fireball Ministry, the Second Great Awakening review coming out tomorrow uh we also got uh shows out on the here like share and subscribe check out freeform check out this thing uh tell your friends be like alpha beta here in california tell a friend man cool and like andy mentioned what we're doing next week so um um i'm looking forward to the super bowl on sunday i'm having kind of a minor yeah. party here not a big one but a minor party <laughs> Uh, taking the wife out to see, uh, she wants to see uh, the Lenny Crab, not the Lenny Crab, it's maybe the Bob Marley movie. She wants to see yeah. that on Wednesday. Same, same. Time. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz wow, movie. that was racist of me. I'm not saying that again. <laughs> no, I, I, I had Lenny Kravitz on my mind for some. But anyway, we're seeing, no, I, I guess it's called One Love, I think it's called, and then we're going out to her favorite okay. dinner outdoors. No. I, I meant me. I said that's all the same. So that was racist of me, <laughs> yeah. not of you. I was joking, though. Yeah. Anyway, Mark, why don't you take us out, man? Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, uh, thank you Chris, guys. as always, man. Uh, next week, uh, BS is going to be an album battle. I think Al Horta and Andy Rodriguez from Black Spinner Circle will be on there. Uh, we're doing an album ba battle, like Andy said. Zeppelin 1 versus Zeppelin 2. They're both eight songs. And I said, why not? <laughs> okay. and well, what, one of them. They each have a song that can be considered one song, kind of. But so. it's bur both eight songs, though. So yeah, they okay. match. Most of yeah. Zeppelin's albums match, like track wise, if you notice. Oh, really? Huh, interesting. Like yeah. commu the communication breakdown, I always had Black Mountainside with that 
Yeah, it, it yeah but I just want to see because there's always a debate which album is better, Zeppelin One, Zeppelin Two. There's okay, fair people enough. on either side of the fence I, on both I'm, those I'm, albums. I'm gonna settle this for you right now. It's Zeppelin Two. So <laughs> that's why I'm not. That's why when you asked me if I wanted to do it, I said no because no matter what you say, it's Zeppelin Two. <laughs> track by track might change your mind, man. You never know. Okay. All right, let's get the fuck out of here, guys. Have a good All right, night. Guys, take care. And uh, go Niners. Go Niners. Later, Later guys.